Talk Radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network at KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. <laughs> For the masses. <laughs> yeah, man. It's Monday, November 19th, 2018. 326 days into the new year, just 39 days left. As always, we are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of beautiful downtown Burbank, California. And I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the planet. I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? Tonight's the night. Oh, yeah, man. Very special guest, Robert Kiviet is here. Robert's been producing UFO and conspiracy content here in Hollywood for over two decades. And tonight, we will be revealing the truth behind Disclosure, TTSA, the Skinwalker Ranch, and the Pentagon. It is all going down tonight. Get ready. Oh, and did I say... Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> because tonight's our show. Tomorrow night, we're going to do Fader Night. Okay? So, uh, without Teresa. Teresa's off doing Thanksgiving with her family, and, and so she's doing that. So, we're going to do that tomorrow night with you, uh, Fader Night. And I do believe, <clears throat> I do believe that tomorrow night we're going to have a live report from Lima, Peru, because tomorrow, kicking off at 9 a.m., is a day-long press conference and presentation on the Nazca mummies going down with the Peruvian government, scientists, researchers, archaeologists. It's all going down tomorrow. So tomorrow night, uh, as we start to kick off Fader Night, I will have a live report from Lima and a breakdown of what is going to transpire for uh, during this press conference. So get ready. That is going to be a huge night tomorrow night. And then we'll open up the phone lines. It'll be Fader Night. And it's our annual Thanksgiving Fader Night that we do every single year. Okay, so I really look forward to that. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we're taking off. We will be spending two days with our family, and you should do the same thing. If you want, uh, we might be uh, playing some replays and doing some stuff, and you can come in and check those out if you wish. But uh, we're not going to be here. No. All right. Taking Wednesday and Thursday off. Just sounds like a great week. This is my favorite time of the year from Halloween all the way through to New Year's. Now, it's a bit different around our house and I talk about it every single year because I have my in-laws. All of us live within uh, like a mile or two of each other. I'm talking about brother-in-law, sister-in-law's parents, uh, cousins, nieces, nephews, grandchildren. 
We all live here. And so we get together and we get together maybe once or twice a month as it is. Right. And, and have these great uh, family gatherings. But from here on out, <laughs> from here on out until like a week into January, it is one big celebration and it just doesn't stop here. So there you go. It's my favorite time of the year. And uh, and every Monday I will be hung over. It's the best part of being in in my family. So I hope that you're going to do the same thing. It is it is just a month and a half of uh, straight celebrations, dinners, and family, and it's going to be amazing. And I can't wait for all of it to transpire. All right, now on Stellar dot com o n s t e l l a r dot com. That is. The platform built for our community. Go and check it out on Stellar.com. Of course, there is Twitter. That's right. You can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Facebook is our radio page, Jimmy Church Radio, I think, or is it called Fade to Black? It's one of the two. You can go find it on Facebook and go and like. We update it uh, nearly every single day and communicate with you there. And then, of course, there is YouTube, and you can subscribe there to our YouTube channel. And I think we're broadcasting live on YouTube tonight. There you go. All right. At J Church Radio, hashtag F2B on Twitter is the sandbox. We don't bite. Come over and hang out with us and join in on the conversation. Twitter is always up and live to my left. Now, email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Before I get to the breaking news, um, over the last, uh, well, you know what? It's been going on for a couple of years. And then I got it chilled out and then swapped out and swapped hard drives. One of my computers here was just going blue screen like three or four times uh, in a row after it started. And, and, you know, and then it was doing it during the show. I replaced that computer over the weekend. That was a really big deal uh, because... It was getting all of the information off of it and and backed up and archived, but no more blue screens. I have not had a blue screen now for two and a half days. Man, (laughs) right? All right. So there you go. Okay, let's get to all this breaking news. Uh, Come join us for the 2019 Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles at the LAX Hilton because this year... We are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Chariots of the Gods. We're going to be doing that with Eric Von Daniken all weekend long. And on Friday night, I'll be hosting the Ancient Aliens panel with Eric and Linda Moulton Howe, Jason Martell, Billy Carson, David Wilcock. That's going to be going down on Friday. Now, the, uh, oh, I don't have the dates up here in front of me. It's in February. Go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com. George Norrie is going to be there this year, of course, and Nassim Haramain, Robert Schock, Daniel Brinkley, Grant Cameron. Julia Mossbridge is going to be there. Teresa Yanaris is going to be there, and another 50 speakers will all be presenting at the 2009 Conscious Life Expo. Just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and a full conference schedule, and we will have banners up and links over at JimmyChurchRadio.com in the coming days. Also, later on in a couple of minutes, we will be announcing our new sponsor and builders of our new night vision goggles, Hoffman's Optics. Just go to hoffmansoptics.com. You can click on their banners over at jimmychurchradio.com. Also, Bitcoin has totally tanked over the last 24 hours. And today, right before showtime, I just checked. It's right around 4,800 ducks. Not bucks. Ducks that are quacking in the pond. Unbelievable. Lots of rumors swirling around Bitcoin right now. And to see this... 48 it got down to 4700 and some change it's back up to around 4800 dollars. unbelievable don't forget to subscribe to our podcast it is just two dollars per month go to yeah february 22nd through the 25th thank you for that mark conscious life expo 2019 uh subscribe to our podcast it's just two dollars a month that's right we have over 900 archive shows right there all of the apps that you need, just click on the podcast banner at jimmychurchradio.com. You can also become a fade or not over in our membership section of jimmychurchradio.com. Get everything that you want 
Whatever you need. You want downloadable MP3s? You got it. Check. You want uh, autographed hats and T-shirts? Check. You got it. You want the bunker cam? You want live video? You got it. You want to email to me? Private email to me? You got it. Just go to the Fade or Not membership section at JimmyChurchRadio.com. And don't forget all of our sponsors here at Jimmy Church Radio. That's right. That's how we do this show. Okay? Aight. Aight. Happy birthday to today. Jody Foster is 56. And she will always make that list because of the movie Contact. Jody Foster, 56 years old. Larry King today is 85. And I would say this was probably around 2010. And I'm at a hotel in Beverly Hills. And I'm standing on the uh, sidewalk. And I see this dude walking towards me, old guy, you know, slowly. I kind of look down. I look back up. And I look down. I look up. And now he's moving slow, taking little foreign steps. Like 10 minutes later, I look up. And now he's fine. And I look. And it's Larry King. (laughs) I was like, oh, my God. Larry, it took him a half an hour to walk a block, and then he just turned and went into the hotel. It was it was bizarre. Larry King by himself walking up the streets in, in Beverly Hills. Hilarious. All right. 85 years old today. Makes the list because he always did shows on UFOs. On this day in history, OTD, 1942, a Soviet counterattack at Stalingrad happened on this day and turned the tide in World War II. It was the beginning of the end for Z. Jadamans. Fader fact. You ready? Sea otters hold hands when they sleep so that they do not drift apart. And that is your fader fact. Ah, sea otters. Tonight, very special guest Robert Kiviet is here. He's been producing UFO and conspiracy content here in Hollywood for the better part of over two decades. And tonight, we're going to be revealing the truth behind Disclosure, TTSA, Skinwalker Ranch, and the Pentagon. It's all going down tonight on this show. Tomorrow night is another fader night. But tomorrow night, Teresa Yanaris is going to be out with her family. It is Thanksgiving week. So we're going to be taking calls all night long, and we will have a special live report from Lima, Peru, Uh, about the press conference on the Nazca mummies that is going down tomorrow at 9 a.m. And then after that, we open up the phone lines all night long. And don't forget, we are taking Wednesday and Thursday off to celebrate Thanksgiving with our family. And now I would like to bring on live with all of you, Mr. Alec Hoffman of Hoffman's Optics. Alec, good evening. How are you? Good evening, uh, Jimmy. Doing fine, thank you. It's good to have you on the show. And so tonight we are announcing uh, the launch of Hoffman's Optics and the new website. And there you go. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. And uh, now what can you tell, Alec, you've been doing this for a very, very long time. And our relationship with you now has uh, been going on for a few years. But what got you started in night vision and UFOs? Well, uh, years ago, probably like 15 years ago, uh, um, actually, uh, Ed Grimsley called uh, our company and was asking uh, about night vision uh, goggles. And uh, as you remember, Ed Grimsley was one of the you know founders of using night vision for for uh, UFO Skywatch. So that's how it gets me started. And uh, I actually mm, quickly become really big fan of phenomena. And uh, so I was actually working with a lot of uh, UFO uh, hunters. Uh, so to speak, and uh, uh, doing uh, shows like Contact in the Desert, Open Mind, etc. And I was providing night vision goggles for a uh, night uh, uh, sky show. And uh, I saw a lot of uh, interesting stuff. Uh, so I quickly became a deliverer and uh, uh, I'm a big fan of phenomena. And uh, so that's how I actually started. And uh, the whole family 
uh, few for uh, um, community, so to speak. Um, they're looking for uh, night vision uh, devices, and uh, I was uh, lucky enough to to meet uh, a lot of great people, and uh, so that's how um, I actually started uh, uh, working with uh, UFO community. With um, all of the events that you have done out there, um, I've, I've spoken about the, my my sightings that I've had. For you, what was the most spectacular thing that you have seen in, in your sky watches? One of them, it was, uh, what, two years ago? We actually, and you were there. We were just side by side, and uh, uh, it was uh, contact in the desert uh at the orion uh, uh viewpoint and uh it was a uh, beautiful uh scenery when three ufo were flying in all different colors from uh, uh cobalt blue and uh, orange red was glowing out of nowhere uh you remember that i do uh and uh, it was you know just one of the greatest uh, moments and another i recall i was uh in uh, Arizona, and I saw really close uh, UFO hovering about uh, above our head, maybe I don't know five miles uh, above. When the whole uh, um, time stopped, and uh, it was one of their you know just greatest uh, experiences I ever saw. And it was a bunch of people with me, uh, and um, it was uh, really. You know, just something, you know, just to remember for, you know, just all my life. Um, so. Now, with night vision, see, this is what I find most amazing is that I've seen some of the most incredible stuff. And then everybody wants to get the same gear that I use, right? And and I've been able to, you know, through you, um, hook up so many of of the fader knots out there that want to, but it's the emails that I get back from them about what they ha- are seeing in their own backyards. You know, this is just amazing. And, and I mean, I get daily reports from around the country, right? They come in and that is the one thing that I, I find so satisfying because I can go and talk about this all day long and it's it's amazing, but it's when others out there get their own night vision goggles and they're able to go out there and see it for themselves, and they they get to turn around and share their stories, and it's just it's so rewarding for me. And now you've started Hoffman's Optics. What were the goals that you had when starting this company? Well, uh, I've been actually with night vision and uh, thermal systems here for. 17 years, almost two de- decades. And the uh, uh, reason why I start my own company because uh, uh, I, I'm building custom uh, systems for uh, UFO community. So it's, it's custom uh, military-grade systems with different varieties. Uh, we have, you know, just uh, from uh, $700 up to $7,000. All kind of different, you know, just uh, uh, systems we built, and they're all custom built. So by doing that, you know, just we're bringing and helping people to see what was going on uh, in infrared spectrum, invisible for human eye, but visible through night vision. By doing that, we kind of open doors, you know, just to different dimensions, so to speak. And people, when they're buying my night vision, uh, email me uh, with remarks like, how did I live without? I have to warn all my consumers always, you know, just my uh, uh, customers who is buying night vision, it is addictive. Night vision addictive. You see nothing, and over the sudden you can see 80,000 plus uh, times more versus naked eye. It is amazing feeling when you can see, you know, just something out of, you know, just uh, in the dark, or you see, you know, just in in in, in the space uh, infinity. So it actually brings me joy as well when people call and say, look, this is amazing. I'm loving my night vision goggles. Such a treasure. So that type of, uh, you know, just uh, text messages, emails, you know, just I receive, and it, it makes my day. So you've got uh, three basic categories here. You've got Orion, Roswell, and Area 52. 
Uh, let's talk about the Orion product line first. Uh, Orion product is actually less expensive product. It's more affordable. So we have new uh, digital day and night uh, recording camera color, and uh, it's for six ninety nine. Uh, unique, very unique uh, uh, unit, and uh, uh, absolutely great quality for 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 your back. So you can record it. You can have uh, also it has you know those compact. It has Wi-Fi feature. It has a uh, GPS uh, feature. Uh, uh, you can actually do snapshots. You can record. And uh, also it's tripod mountable. Uh, very small, little, tiny unit. Comes with all the cables. You can download you know, all the video. And the uh, uh, beauty of this unit, you can actually look through a through, uh, uh, window, through glass. So and recorded um, and for six ninety nine, it's excellent gift for Christmas gift or uh, holiday season. Uh, we do have available uh, right now. It's always uh, uh, shipping free, and, uh, shipping enough. And uh, and uh, and then you have the HP seven uh, two W. Exactly. This is night vision goggles. It's a, uh, based on PVS-7. Uh, it's a military-grade goggles. We, it comes with uh, a duration 2+, plus high-performance white uh, phosphor image tube. Um, uh, unit actually uh, includes headgear. And uh, uh, this unit uh, will give you duration 2+, plus high-performance enhance each particle of light uh, up to 60,000 times uh, versus duration three, which is 80,000 plus times. Black and white phosphor. Black and white phosphor, uh, it's uh, pleasant for human eye, uh, more pleasant than green color. So uh, that's why black and white TV was made. So since it's more pleasant for human eye, you can look longer through the device without getting a sore eye. So uh, also uh, this unit uh, um, cell phone adaptable. So we have also um, universal cell phone. So you can attach it you know, to so one of the uh, eyepieces and uh, record uh, you know just video if you wish. Now each one. And, let's. Uh, I don't want to run out of time. Let's talk about the Roswells. Roswell. It's uh, Roswell. It's a generation three. The whole line is a generation three. Uh, um, night vision goggles. So we have available green phosphor, white phosphor, and deep blue phosphor. Which is the new, brand new, right, which is brand new and exclusive to Hoffman Optics is the blue tubes. Available on, uh, that's exactly right. And uh, that design we've discussed with you years ago and uh, finally it's out. It's absolutely beautiful um, and uh, approved by you because, you know, just uh, that unit, uh, that system is unique. And now let's uh, uh, quickly, let's go through the Area 52 uh, because now we've got uh, stereoscopic goggles here. Uh, Area 52 stereoscopic goggles. It's aviation goggles, basically. Uh, quite a, you know, just uh, uh, you know, just expensive, but it's uh, due to the technology. You have two units uh, combined together with a single control, brightness control um, feature, and uh, it's uh, the, the, the aviation grade goggles have the uh, highest grade of night vision you can ever buy. So. That's why uh, it's kind of, you know, just expensive. We have less expensive uh, stereoscopic goggles for ground troops and uh, with uh, uh, duration four tube. Uh, also available in blue, uh, a little bit less expensive. Uh, stereoscopic goggles, very comfortable when you actually uh, looking uh, into the sky because each eye can be independently uh, adjusted and uh, you can see depth perception of, uh, you know, scenery. Uh, also available, you know, just uh, night vision monoculars. And the new model, it's called Eurofor Skywatch. 
This model is unique because you don't have front objective lens, you know, trunk like we uh, PVS seven goggles. It's absolutely flat, like a camera for a camera. And the first fifteen units will come with blue, deep blue cobalt uh, uh, image uh, tube or phosphor. Uh, later on, um, 2019, those units will be available with a recording feature on board, as the cart on board. That's what we're working on. But uh, uh, this is series Area 52 uh, exclusively. It's all a custom build. I would like to emphasize that custom build for each customer. This is pretty exciting. So that's a Generation 3 Blue Image Tube. And then in 2019, you'll be introducing the uh, recording capability directly on this. And also, um, you will have an amplifier. Correct. That's exactly correct. We're working right now on, on, on those actual devices. Um, um, it's, it's a lot of challenges how to do uh, that particular app, uh, particular feature and have on, on board recording feature <clears throat> because it's through night vision. It's not digital. So uh, somehow um, we need to digitalize signal in order to record her. So um, finally, we came up with a solution. It's uh, uh, right now in prototype. We tested and retested. Uh, works absolutely beautifully. Thank you so much, so, Alec. Uh, this is very, very exciting. <laughs> now, everybody can go to uh, hoffmansoptics.com. The links, the banners, everything is up over at jimmychurchradio.com. And they can reach out to you directly for any questions, right? Yes, please call me anytime. I will explain to you all you need to know and answer all your questions you might have. And I greatly appreciate your time, Jimmy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you, Alec. Uh, what are you doing uh, for Thanksgiving? Same as you advise. We gather with family, you know, just we cook, we, you know, just we make noise, we laugh, we dance, you know, just, and that's all about the uh, uh, holidays. It's my favorite season. Same as yours. I Ab- love the holidays. Absolutely. So be safe out there. Have a great, great, safe, fun, and festive <laughs> Thanksgiving. I was going to say <laughs> something else. But, yeah, you go and do it, Alec. Thank you so much, my friend, and congratulations you- on Hoffman's Optics. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for having me, and uh, I wish you great holidays as well. Thank you so much, Alec, and Good we'll night. talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Hoffman's Optics, there you go. The complete product line is right up there at jimmychurchradio.com. Click, go over, any questions. The key here um, uh, is the product line is extensive, but the new deep blue tubes, exclusive for Hoffman's Optics. Absolutely incredible technology. All right, now um, I'm going to get out of here. I'll be right back. With our guest, Robert Kiviet is here. It is going to be an explosive evening. Get ready for all of this. And I'll be right back after this short break. This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and KGRA The Planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Email is jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. And you can follow me at jchurchradio on Twitter. I'll be right back. Stay with us. Nicole Church, daughter of you-know-who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. 
when you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black. You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, folks. It's the holiday season with hope in the air. Things to look forward to and no time for despair. Health can be a challenge, and so can the mail. So Get the Tea wants to help you by giving you a sale. Buy two months of Super Tea and get one month for free. No limit. That's buy two months of Super Tea and get one month free. That's a savings of 35 bucks. Where? GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Scroll down on the front page and find the Buy Two, Get One Free add click it and save orders over a hundred dollars get free shipping send the gift of life change tea at get we have many many non-gmo organic supplements just waiting for you this holiday season enjoy health and thanksgiving with get the tea.com want to call us 928-308-0408 that's 928-308-0408 get the tea.com is a proud sponsor of doing what's right that's get the tea Dot com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Do you want to lose weight but have no idea where to begin? The Fast Start Diet, a three day weight loss plan, is the answer. Three days of nutritionally balanced, calorie-restricted meals delivered right to your door. No shopping, no measuring, and no cooking. Everything is prepared for you and ready to eat at home or on the go. The Fast Start Diet has all the amazing benefits of intermittent fasting without starving. We've helped thousands of people who have struggled to reach their weight loss goals. Isn't it time we helped you? With the Fast Start Diet, you'll lose weight and feel great. Find Fast Start Diet on Amazon or go to FastStartDiet.com and use promo code TALK to get 10% off your first box. And as a special bonus, Fast Start will include their number one rated LiPo3 appetite suppressant spray free with your order. This is Jimmy Church. And whatever your diet plans are, do what I did. Go to FastStartDiet.com. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey. You're You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Very simple, easy. Tonight, it is Robert Kibbiot. He is here. Tomorrow night is Fader Night. Remember, we're taking Wednesday and Thursday off to celebrate Thanksgiving with our family. So we're going to do Fader Night tomorrow night. And we will have a special live report from Lima, Peru. And uh, tomorrow is a press conference on the Nazca Mummies. Yeah, it's pretty interesting what's going on down there in the next 24 hours. And we will have a live report tomorrow night. But tonight it's Robert Kiviet. Robert is best known for helping the Fox Network establish its alternative uh, TV department with high, highly rated primetime documentary specials such as The Alien Autopsy, Factor Fiction, UFOs, The Best Evidence Ever Caught on Tapes, Number One and Two, Miracles and Visions, Factor Fiction. 
prophecies of the millennium, world's greatest hoaxes, secrets finally revealed, and ghosts caught on tape factor fiction. Robert then wrote, directed, and produced the documentary feature, I Shot JFK, The Shocking Truth. And then in 2014, NBC Sci-Fi aired Robert's two-hour event documentary special, Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed. Currently, he is developing a TV series that expands on the December 17, 2017 New York Times front page investigation, which ushered in a new UFO era by reporting that the Pentagon firmly believes UFOs recently filmed by military cameras might be alien spacecraft posing a real and present global danger. There you go. Tonight, for the first time on Fade to Black, Robert Kiviet. Robert, good evening, my friend. How are you? Great to be with you, Jimmy. How you doing? Well, you know, it's Thanksgiving week, so there you go. We got that going for us, Robert. Yeah, sure do. Now, before we get started, we've got to do the first-time guest disclaimer. Okay, so the next time you're on the show, we're not going to do it, but tonight we will, and it's this. It's just you and I sitting on my couch having a conversation as friends, and when the conversation starts, it starts. Where it ends, it ends, but we're going to end as friends. See? Simple. You ready? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Been doing it for years, Rob. I don't even know how it got started, but now if I have a first-time guest on and I don't do the disclaimer, uh, <laughs> i got to deal with Twitter blowing up for three and a half hours, so... There you go. You've been doing this for a very, very long time. And certainly this last year has been one of the craziest in ufology, if you can imagine that. Uh, It's certainly been that way. But for you, what got you started in in this uh, UFO conspiracy thing? Well, it's an interesting thing. Uh, You know, I was a writer in high school, a writer in college, uh, ran my, you know, college paper at college in New York. And uh, I would always try to slip in some of these mysteries somewhere, somehow. But more than anything, I was at that time covering a lot of political type stuff, uh, you know, governmental stuff. And I was concerned at the time in college uh, that, uh, you know, we might have a war with the Russians. It was before the uh, Berlin Wall came down. And, you know, I really focused my energies on two things. I said to a professor at college uh, once uh, when he asked me, "Now, now that you're editor in chief of the paper, Bob, what are the most important things for people your age? And I said, well, you know, it could well be we might have a nuclear war or maybe aliens might come back to avert it. And he looked at me like I was speaking another language, of course, but uh, I had done a lot of research over the years as a young kid and knew a lot about the Roswell case, knew a lot about UFOs in general. And I had come across a documentary when I was in college uh, called UFOs Are Real. And it's a very interesting documentary. It's uh, done in the 19, late 1970s, 79, I believe. And uh, it was uh, done in a way where it was just straight up, you know, the evidence that was presented at that time. At that time, And I figured, you know what, maybe there's a way I can make a living doing that one day. But, uh, you know, reality took shape as I left college. And I realized, you know what, there aren't too many people that can do something like that for a living. So I kind of just went into the normal ways of making money in New York. I became an advertising uh, graphics expert and worked in the graphics and in advertising for a while. And then I looked into this case that I had looked at at college in that documentary, and it was the Billy Meyer case. Mm. And I sent some photographs or some evidence uh, of the Billy Meyer case uh, to a, uh, a top expert, and he was very intrigued. So then I took the next step, and I contacted somebody I felt was a really top expert, uh, and I felt if he was working with NASA, this guy, and he felt these were very serious images, then I should take it seriously. So one thing led to another, and I gave up up the advertising business, decided to make a a trip around the country and talk, talk to a lot of the top experts, and decided, you know what, UFOs and phenomena, I put those categories together, basically, UFOs and phenomena, would be an interesting area to kind of cull as my beat if I was going to take over, let's say, and go into journalism and you know go that route. Mm-hmm. When I say take over, I, I didn't see anybody doing that really seriously. And uh, another thing had happened, uh, a show called Unsolved Mysteries on NBC at that time had become very popular. And also A Current Affair had come on the air with uh, Rupert Murdoch's group. And I felt, boy, there's, there's definitely an indication this stuff could become a career. So I called it again, and I realized 
you know what, maybe I need to go back to my writing chops and get those back in motion. So I was playing baseball one, after, one evening, actually, softball, I should say, uh, with uh, the group that did Omni Magazine. Right. And Omni Magazine was a great science magazine in New York uh, back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and it was before that as well. And I was playing second base, and the shortstop was worked for that group. And I turned to this guy, Jeff, and I went, Jeff, let me talk to you after uh, the game later. And I told him I was looking into doing a story about the face on Mars. I thought the Mars mystery was another great mystery. And again, photographically supported by NASA imagery. The Viking images that the Viking orbiter had shot looked like there was a face maybe on the planet Mars looking up, some kind of structure. And there were also pyramids nearby, I thought. So I told uh, Jeff about this. And he goes, you know what? You should pitch that to Omni. And at this point, Jimmy, I had not written for a very long time. Uh, been seven years since college, I guess. And I was figuring, you know what? I'm not quite sure I can, I can, I can, you know, get a, an article written right off the, you know, out of the bat or off the bat. So literally I went and wrote a query letter, just a letter, but I had contacted one of the NASA experts that had looked into the Billy Meyer photographs and his name was Dr. Michael Malin. And he was now in charge of building a new craft and a new, a, new, a new camera, should I say, to re-image the face on Mars. And Michael Malin, very interesting guy. Uh, he had been really involved in a lot of interesting mis- you know, research and whatnot. He was a geologist and an expert with cameras. And so I, I reached out and said, this is a very good article, I felt. Omni agreed that we should do it. And it became the cover article for Omni magazine in the early 90s. And that article actually came out the same exact edition, it was on the cover, that a very no- another important article came out that we'll talk about tonight involving one of the CIA people named Ron Pandolfi. So I found it as an interesting cross point that my article with Omni Magazine that got me back into writing about this whole thing, this idea about phenomena and aliens and whatnot, also had an article in the same edition somewhat referencing Ron Pandolfi at the CIA. So that became a very interesting cross point for our talk tonight. But anyway, after that, I became a, a writer and producer for a show called Now It Can Be Told with Geraldo Rivera. And they had heard about my work, about the Mars work, and they felt I should come in and give them stories. So we did a story about celebrities who had seen UFOs. And I got Ronald Reagan to confirm that he had seen a UFO. He was governor of California. Uh, he wasn't on camera, but he confirmed in a letter to me that he had seen the UFO and that there was no doubt that if we interviewed his pilot, Bill Painter, Bill would give a great story of what, what, what happened, which he did. And we had other people in that same edition or that segment. John Lennon's girlfriend, Mae Pang, confirmed that John Lennon had seen an amazing UFO in New York. And even Muhammad Ali, uh, confer, uh, the uh, trainer for Muhammad Ali, and Angela Dundee, he confirmed that Muhammad Ali had seen UFOs in Central Park while he was with – uh, reporters years ago. So we did these stories, a couple, another one for, on Area 51 I did for Geraldo. And Unsolved Mysteries on NBC, the show that I wanted to work for, heard about me. And they asked me to come to California. I brought with me a tape. And that tape became known as the Guardian UFO Landing or Guardian UFO Tape. Oh, the it one in Canada? A, the, are the, you aware of that, Jimmy? Yeah, the Canadian Guardian Tape. Yeah, well, you're talking to the guy who broke it. Now, here's how I broke that. Do you know how many Geraldo? times I watched that video? Do you have any idea? Well, me and everybody else. But I watched it over and over and <laughs> over again um, when it broke. Okay, continue. Well, Jimmy, it's a great story because it'll come back to our conversation tonight. This, what the CIA or this one guy affiliated with the CIA has been saying to me that he has other ideas about that case, but we'll get into that tonight. Anyway, the Canadian UFO story, as you call it, and as as the Unsolved Mysteries people called it as well, uh, that's a story about a a guy named Guardian. And here's how it went down. Uh, I had had Bob Exler, a very good UFO researcher and former NASA NASA mission specialist, excuse me. Um, He had been in the Area 51 story that we did on Geraldo's Now Can Be Told. And so I'm sitting in my office one day up in New York, and I get this package brought to me, and it's from Bob Exler. And I open up the package, and it's got this VHS tape, and it has a fingerprint looking like just like you'd put a fingerprint, like if you were uh, being arrested. And the fingerprint was on the tape, on the label, and the word guardian very clearly you know, printed out, typewritten. 
And I said, okay, let me see what this is. And I pop it into my, uh, my player, and I couldn't believe what I'm seeing. It looks like a flashing, blinking UFO with color and luminosity and things that I can never uh, associate with anything I've ever seen before. And then one of the key moments in this video, there are like four sequences, is when the person, whoever the guardian is, is coming up on a rise. And as he comes up on this rise, you can see the entire layout of this craft it looks like it's backlit by the lighting of whatever is creating this uh, incredible luminosity. And I figured, oh, my God. And I remember the, the tape librarian for our show was walking by my desk. And she came by and she went, oh, my God, Bob, is that a UFO? Is that a, is that a flying saucer? And right away I knew I had something there. Someone was just walking by really quickly and just it caught their eye right away. Right, Jimmy, the segment that we did on Unsolved Mysteries, it was my first big one there. It was a 25 share in homes. That means one out of four TVs was on this. So it was also a moment where, you know, Robert Stack, the famous, you know, host, had never held up a tape saying, this could be the first proof of, you know, UFO. So it was really a fascinating story. And, I, and to this day, there are a lot of mysteries about that. But that brought me to Unsolved Mysteries. And at Unsolved Mysteries, I did another big story about Mexico UFOs. And I really am, you know, for, for better or worse, I really like Jaime Musan, but I got to tell you, I took him from Mexico and put him on American television. Uh, he hadn't been seen by anybody, really, to my knowledge. And I put him on Unsolved Mysteries, talking about these Mexico UFOs, incredible 1991 event. And if no one knows about that, they should know that in 1991, on July 11th, during a solar eclipse, apparently saucers came and appeared over four major parts of Mexico simultaneously. Uh, they were filmed by many videographers, and it was really one of the most amazing cases of UFOs or mass UFO sightings ever. And so Jaime was on that show, and I did a, a, a lot of major you know, crime segments, too, for Unsolved Mysteries, Mysteries, but my main core always was unexplained phenomena. And I remember the producers were pretty upset at Unsolved Mysteries because I had come along out of nowhere and done a lot of these highly rated phenomena you know, you know, shows, and I did one on ghosts. I did one on actually one of my most uh, um, memorable and for me important ones was a segment about the Fatima miracle in 1917 in Portugal, where a lot of people believe it may well be a miracle worthy of biblical type significance. Uh, the Pope, John Paul II, believed it was worthy of belief of being a miracle. It's where allegedly 70,000 people had witnessed the sun spinning in such a way or something looking like the sun, and it came down to the earth, dried an area that was deluge with rain for days, dried it up really quickly. There was a, a reporter there from a major newspaper in Portugal, and he covered it. And he said it was it a major event. He witnessed it. And it's before video cameras, you know, and all that. But so that was another big story that we did that falls under this kind of phenomena. And I and I am very proud of that one as well because it really gave people the idea that you know UFOs and miracles and things tied to religion may all be connected. And so that was something that I was very proud of. But then again, Fox found me. They had heard about my work, and I had a meeting with them, and they were doing a brand new series called Encounters, and they said, could I come on and, and help that show? And I did a lot of great segments for them and became the coordinating producer. And when that show ended, I had just heard about something called the alien autopsy. Mm -hmm. And what happened was someone at Omni magazine, who I used to write for, they called me up and said, did you hear about this Steven Spielberg movie coming out about an alien autopsy from Roswell. And I said, really? Steven Spielberg, Amblin Entertainment is doing that? They said, well, that's what we're hearing. I said, well, I, well I'll check into it for you. So I checked in with Amblin and they said, no, there was nothing to it. And then, of course, they told Omni Magazine the same thing. And Omni published that. And then I got a phone call. Still sitting at Encounters, getting ready to leave. The show was being canceled pretty much. And uh, the call came in from a guy from England, and he said, I was watching the TV, and I heard and watched a guy named Reg Presley from a band called the Trogs, an mm. old British band. Right. And he was sitting on this TV morning show saying he had seen an alien autopsy video. And I went, what? How could that be a coincidence? There must be a tie-in to this alleged Steven Spielberg movie. And so I got in contact eventually with this Ray Santilli, who was this British entrepreneur who claimed he had received this 
alien autopsy reel from a, mil- a former military cameraman. He had been looking for old footage of Elvis Presley, and sure enough, a cameraman popped up and said, I have something even more amazing to show you than that. And according to the story, Santilli went to this guy's house in Florida, and he made a deal to buy this footage, and he came and he basically came back to England and tried to figure a way out to you know process it and bring it to air and whatever. Finally, I was there in England, and I was watching this with about 200 other people in a big auditorium. And I had met with Chantilly prior to this big event. So he pretty much had given the, or gave me the idea that I would get the rights for this material. And so we took it to Fox. I took it to Fox where I had been doing my work. And they agreed it would be a great show. Whether or not it was real or not, it was a, a video that needed to be, or a film that needed to be looked into. We never said it was real, no matter what anybody says. Alien autopsy, fact or fiction, just like it says, fact or fiction, question mark. We questioned it the entire first time we aired the show. We never, ever said it was a real film. We didn't know that for sure. We said, you'll have to decide for yourself. We called in the experts. We treated it like it was some type of uh, document like you'd bring to a courtroom or to experts to look into. We did our job. Three years, three years later... When I was doing other shows for Fox, I did a show called Miracles and Visions, Fact or Fiction, like you said. Is that a show about miracles caught on tape? Yes, it's a show showing all kinds of different things that have been caught on tape, the sun blinking and wildly pulsating, many other things like bleeding icons and whatnot. And we felt, again, it fell fell into this category of phenomena. It was not necessarily tied to UFOs. But the X-Files was popular then, too, and so I was really doing specials that was doing the real X-Files, Jimmy, not, you know, made up, you know, by, by, by uh, you know, writers. These were the real stories of the day. So all these stories led to another big show for me. I did a show called Prophecies of the Millennium, where we looked into the idea that maybe the end of the world was coming, the eschatology kind of thing, and conspiracies tying into that. And one of our experts, believe it or not, predicted more or less 9-11. We had an expert named Neil Livingstone, and he was a terrorism expert, who ironically, his wife was in the Pentagon when the 9-11 event eventually happened. But this expert said, based on a lot of things he was looking at, the World Trade Center was still a major, major target. And we had another expert who was interested in Nostradamus, an expert, and he said he predicted that there would be some kind of event by the World Trade Center just around you know, the year 2000, and it would be a major event happening from high up above in the building and then maybe, or buildings, and then some kind of terrible cataclysm would happen to the lower Manhattan area. So I got a call from someone in the media that asked me if we predicted that. And I said, of course not. We didn't predict that, but that was just part of what goes on. So those are the kind of things that brought me into this whole thing, Jimmy. And for me, when Fox decided that we weren't going to do these shows anymore, uh, I was really taken aback. Uh, that was sometime after 9-11. So I looked around and found out who else was doing shows like this. It took me a while to get to sci-fi, but I did some work there as well. The show Factor, a show Factor Fake that was on for two years, a series. I had helped really develop that show for the network. And I, I'm not going to say it was necessarily my show, but it was definitely conceived by me initially with the, ex, with the executives up there. And then it eventually led to the show Aliens on the Moon, The Truth Exposed, which to this day, I have to tell you, showed evidence that we believe – there were structures on the moon before the astronauts ever landed there. And in the interview with Buzz Aldrin that I gave, I kept asking Buzz, uh, the interview that I did, I mean, I kept asking Buzz to look at the photos and Buzz would not look at the photos. Buzz was just, I will not look, I will not look. But he did say he believed there was evidence of possibly alien artifacts on the moon around Mars called Phobos. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't talk about the moon right here, But he said, you know, he believed and some experts believed there's a monolith sticking out of this Martian moon called Phobos. And this is an area that we should be going back to or go to initially. And we should use Phobos for a landing platform to go land men on on the Mars surface. So I was very intrigued by that. But Buzz also gave me indications that we should be looking at other kinds of space travel besides what we have right now. And that made me think, hmm. Maybe anti-gravity propulsion was something more than just an idea. And we had interviewed for one of my shows. It's on Netflix tonight. You can see it, UFOs, the best evidence ever caught on tape, the first one. And there's Admiral Bobby Ray Inman, former director of the National Security Agency, deputy director of the CIA. And he's telling my staff and me pretty much, 
and also, of course, the viewers, that he found the UFO footage we were showing over Mexico and Area 51 and Gulf Breeze, Florida. Very, very compelling. He didn't know what they were, these UFOs, but he thought they were intriguing. And he also said he indicated in many ways that anti-gravity propulsion seemed to me something to look into. And he said it off camera. He said it also in other places. So that gave me an idea for years, Jimmy, to look into anti-gravity propulsion. And we'll get into that too. But anyway, that leads us to the event you described. What happened in December of 2017, the New York Times coming out with an article. I mean, I was born and raised on New York Times. You know, it's funny, Geraldo Rivera used to say to me, the gray pages, Bob, of the New York Times. The gray, he said it to everybody. The gray pages, meaning... They were boring, but they might be good, straight journalism, but they weren't really sensational in any way. You know, Geraldo believed in sensation. He believes in creating sensation, and, and I do to some degree too. But the question really is, why would the New York Times write an article like they did in December of 2017 if they didn't believe there was evidence that our government has concluded that there were these tic-tac UFOs over San Diego or close to San Diego, and they were around nuclear aircraft carrier maneuvers in 2004, and that was the main thread of the story in the New York Times. Well, but what I, my okay, well, let me... that I've developed now that we're pitching to a few of the networks now is going to get into is very much, is that possible? Well, are there Robert, really these tic-tac craft? Robert, what I, people are going to learn from the series that I'm doing, and I can't say what To the Stars Academy is claiming, and I can't say what is happening elsewhere. But I can tell you for sure, I heard directly on the phone from a witness that was right above David Fravor. Uh, for people that don't know, David Fravor was the pilot. Okay, Robert, let, let me jump. Robert. 50-foot-long, 25-foot-wide little capsules, if you will. It looked like a Tic Tac candy, if you will. Smooth, no basic uh, appendages of any kind. It looked like a Tic Tac candy, if you will. Smooth. No basic appendages of any kind except for maybe two little, minor little antennas sticking out of the bottom, which most people don't know, but we'll get into that. And this UFO that he witnessed flew away at such a – by the way, the movement of it was so strangely erratic and so not like anything we have on this earth that we're aware of. Dave Favor, of course, believes it was not probably nothing from here. But the witness above him is a female pilot. I can't mention her name tonight, but we'll get into it more, I'm sure. She wants a, a degree of anonymity for now because she teaches at a very prestigious institution of our government. She's a Top Gun pilot. She was 1,000 feet above Fravor, staring down at Fravor while this Tic Tac craft was zipping around away from his plane, doing a barrel roll right at him, and then literally flies off into the wild blue yonder at a speed that she's never even thought of it before in her, in her life. Okay, and Robert, she believed, I, I need to take a break. Me, I need oh, to take a break right here. Need to take a, a quick network break. Let's do that. Our guest tonight, Robert Kiviet. He is here, producer here in Los Angeles for over a couple of decades. And what we're going to discuss tonight is disclosure. TTSA, Skinwalker Ranch, and the Pentagon. It's all going down tonight here on Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. More with Robert after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station. Salt Lake City, Utah. Van Buren, Arkansas. Come join us for the 2019 Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles at the LAX Hilton. This year, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Chariots of the Gods with Eric Von Daniken, and I'll be hosting the panel with Eric, Linda Moulton Howe, Jason Martell, Billy Carson, and David Wilcock. Join George Norrie, Nassim Haramain, Robert Schock, Daniel Brinkley, Grant Cameron, Julia Mossbridge, Teresa Yanaris, and another 50 speakers who will be presenting at the 2019 Conscious Life Expo. Just go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and a full conference schedule or click on the CLE banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Go back, Lee Tappy. Folks. 
This is very important information. What's to be said about CBD? AncientLifeOil.com. Our CBD is made from hemp and has 0.003 THC, which means this wonderful product won't get you high. No matter what amount you take, what does CBD do for the body? My hands are tied. But you can Google CBD benefits and be astounded. When you're finished reading, you'll want to log on to AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com and purchase. Life is good when you feel good. People are tired of pain. People are asking for non-GMO organic products to help them with (laughs) you fill in the blank. Legal in 49 states and again our CBD is made from hemp. Ancient Life Oil is about helping people one by one by one. If you wonder how good the product is, the CEO takes it every day without miss. AncientLifeOil.com. That's AncientLifeOil.com. Have a great day. Hi, this is Ray Sobbs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> we are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. Reclaim your active lifestyle with Angioprim. Angioprim is the original liquid oral chelation supplement. Chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in your veins and arteries that can cause blockages. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. Find out more. Go to angioprim.com. Talk to a trained consultant by calling Angioprim toll-free, 877-882-7221. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hey, it's Grace. Can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger, you know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the lucky pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. <laughs> Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Robert Kiviet. Tomorrow night is Fader Night. Open lines all night long. we got a live report coming in from Lima, Peru on the Nazca Mummies. And then it'll be open lines all night long. I want to remind all of you that we are taking the rest of the week off, Wednesday and Thursday. We're going to spend Thanksgiving with our family. Now back to Robert. Okay, Robert, uh, December 17th, 2017, the day of disclosure, right? Uh, New York yeah, yeah. Times, all the major media outlets uh, picked up on the story, front page news. Everybody uh, took off and ran with it. With your experience, you know, doing this for so long, have you ever seen the the mainstream media pick up on a story so quickly? 
No, in fact, that was one of the most intriguing things about it, Jimmy, that, that it, it picked up immediately steam, CNN, Fox News, uh, a, a plethora of other outlets, and both print and you know, conventional media. And so that was a good thing. But I think when you dig into the New York Times article, some of my uh, fandom or my uh, putting them on a pedestal journalistically, well, took a step down. Uh, there are some gaping, gaping problems in the article in terms of why not follow up on certain key issues, such as $22 million, whether it's a drop in the bucket, according to some, or whether it's a lot of money, according to some, $22 million is still $22 million. And if $22 million went to Bob Bigelow, as it was clearly indicated in the article, then their lack of knowing about Skinwalker Ranch is a major, major uh, blight in their journalism uh, uh, you know, acumen, if you will. And then not to look into the issue that maybe that $22 million wasn't going to look into UFO videos. All right, UAPs for some people, but you know, I think Jimmy Kimmel said it best to you know, Hillary Clinton on when, he, when he had her on. I like UFOs better. You know what I mean? Well, now we're going to change the name of it for some, I guess, reason that may fall into the uh, aerospace or the military parlance of some, some, for some reason. But let's just call them what they are. UFOs being chased by our own military jets that are doing things that we do not believe any country, any known country on the planet Earth has or any private institution has as far as we know. And so that's a good part of the story. But then when you say $22 million was in more or less earmarked toward Bob Bigelow, and you don't mention Skinwalker Ranch really at all of any real serious way, then you're not doing your job. And so we realized right away at my company that this was an area that we knew how to cull, and we started looking into things. And I spoke to Hal Putoff on three or four occasions, and uh, actually I got that three occasions. And I got to tell you that Hal, who I knew back years ago when I did a story with Araldo Rivera on, on remote viewing, Jimmy, uh, Hal is an interesting scientist, no doubt about it. But his connections to members of the CIA, his connections to certain people, you must look into this deeply. And again, the New York Times made it sound like Hal Putoff was this like scientist with very, very fascinating comments like comparing, you know, what, you know, looking into whether or not – I forgot who it was. I thought it was Da Vinci or Michelangelo. I think it was Da Vinci. What would happen if he found something like a, you know, a device that was, had plastic on it and it was a, a transmitter of some kind? How would he look into it? It was a really bizarre comment from a scientist that really doesn't know much about UFO videos or things like that. And again, the article maybe was good for some reasons. It got the word out there that UFOs could be real. But it also left these gaping holes that need to be closed, and that's what we're going to do. And there are some expansion areas as well, such as if $22 million was given to the group called ATIP or the, or the former group to do this type of stuff under Bigelow's direction, what other monies are out there? Are there black budget programs that we're, un we're unaware of? Why didn't they look into that? They even put the, the headline, they, they implied in the headline – that there would be black budget research somewhere in the article, but there wasn't any. And I'm going to be honest with everyone tonight. The black budget program, that's where this is all going. This is where this is you know, leading to. And so private industry working with black budget money, that's been the story, I believe, with UFOs and this whole idea for many, many years. So again, it was a great front page article on Sunday, that, that Sunday, but it didn't get followed up on at all by the New York Times. And one has to wonder what's going on. So we're doing that work now, Jimmy. And that's why I mentioned this other pilot. There are people that say David Fravor is not real, that David Fravor didn't really see this Tic Tac. And that person who's saying it most is at the, you know, formerly at the CIA, as far as I can tell. And so why would people be trying to state from the official level of the intelligence community that the entire Tic Tac event in 2004 – by the you know Nimitz carrier aircraft carrier group, why is that not true? According to this CIA operative that I've been talking to, he says it's not true. Well, how is it not true when we have an ex a pilot over Dave Fravor, as I was saying before the commercial break, staring at the event, watching it occur, freaked her out. So what's going on here? Well, 
as you know from Grant Cameron, I'm sure, and other people out there, there's, this, there's a term called limited hangout. And what t- tends to happen is the limited hangout is when the government offers up information about this stuff, but then also muddies it with strange information. So you don't know what to, what to believe. If you muddy the water, then you don't know what you have. Just take a look at the provenance or lack thereof of the videos that were released. First of all, let's take a look at the Tic Tac video from 2004. That video apparently came out like in 2006 sometime. We're not even sure. And it was posted somewhere. Again, we're not sure. But it looks like it was out there before, after it happened in 2004. That's right. Then there's this other video called the Gimbal video. Now, why is it called the Gimbal video? Apparently because the camera operates on a gimbal and it's some kind of, you know, moving device. Now, why is it called the gimbal? That's very bizarre. And then the New York Times, in their infinite not wisdom, they conflated the two videos. On their website, they showed two videos, the 2004 video, known as this Nimitz video, I guess, and then this gimbal video, which clear, clearly did not look like the same kind of technology. It looked like it was more modern technology. They didn't even notice it didn't look the same. They claimed it was from the same event, That's but right. it was not. That's right. And our research has indicated that it comes from the 2015 event off the coast of Florida that we think was associated with the Roosevelt carrier group in Florida. So that was only three years ago. And our research also indicates that there were major, major sightings during that event on the East Coast three years ago, and it involved the same Tic Tac craft that were seen in 2004 around the Nimitz. Now, keep in mind, Jimmy, what we're talking about, potentially hundreds of these Tic Tac UFOs, 50 foot long, 20 foot fi- 20 fo- 25 feet wide, coming down from space, maneuvering around our aircraft carriers, that are, our ca- aircraft carrier group that has nuclear weapons involved. That's an unbelievably scary scenario. So why is it being treated in the way that it is? The provenance of these videos is very sketchy. The Pentagon has not confirmed they released these. Why doesn't the Pentagon say, Yes, we allowed for the release of these videos. The semantics that I'm hearing from Lou Elizondo, I mean, it was a release, but it really wasn't released. I mean, let's make it clear, please. You know, the Pentagon has spokespeople. They could easily say whatever the provenance chain of, event, chain of title was, let's hear it. But right now, if you actually ask the one journalist that I'm aware of, I won't name him tonight, who asked the Pentagon shortly after the release from the New York Times, They said they did not release these videos. So it's a very strange, limited hangout. Where did you go first as you started to uh, look at this? Because the same names uh, that have been, you know, in UFO circles and conspiracy circles are now starting to surface uh, with this story a year ago. Where did you decide to go first? Well, the names were the same names that we have been hearing about in UFO parlance for years. Hal Putoff, Kit Green, Ron Pendolfi, uh, later on Joe Firmage. Jim um, Semivan. Jim, well, Jim Semivan's name was never known. I never heard of Jimmy, Jim Semivan popped up on that stage when Tom DeLong announced what he was going to be releasing shortly and what he was getting together with To The Stars Academy. Right. I, I will challenge anyone to tell me they heard of Jim Simi Van before that day. Oh, I did. I never did. <laughs> but that's, an, oh, that's a whole other thing. Okay, so... so I, Jimmy, we're on your couch here, right? You said, well, so right. tell me, when did you hear of his name? Did he reach out to you? Um, the, oh, oh, man. Um, if, I, if I start to talk here, then others will... Uh, put things together. So I will avoid that. I will say this. Um, Three years ago, uh, for me, three years ago, uh, Jim Semivan came into this circle uh, with a vengeance. And it, uh, and so I'm going to say that that was three years ago. uh, By the way, which circles? uh, uh, Top level conversations with ufo researchers but let me say this 
the original, that was October, I believe October 11th when they did the live press conference. Sure. So that was now just over a year ago. We're only on November 19th, right? Yeah, so much has happened in this last year. Semivan- well, anyway, the reason, the reason why I focus on Jim Semivan is because according to the individual at the CIA or been affiliated for years with the CIA and DIA, mm-hmm. he's saying no. Jim Simivan is not real. Again, could be ridiculous. When I say real, does he really have the credentials? And then back and forth they go. Right. The infighting between our comments made between these individuals we're talking about, Hal Putoff talking about Ron, Ron talking about Hal, Ron talking about Jim Simivan, and back and forth it goes. It's really kind of childish. The whole thing boils down to a lot of nonsense because these people at least are going public and saying what they're saying. That's fine. If 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 Jim Simivan wasn't really a CIA agent, I guess he'd get in trouble for saying he formerly was, mm-hmm. one would think. Right. So I'll leave that alone, but I will say this. I do not understand the focus on To the Stars Academy as anything more than an entertainment company because that's what they appear to be. When you receive daily, I receive daily uh, emails from them selling shirts, selling books. Right. Selling everything but UFO research. I do not understand how you can represent yourself and tell the public to donate money to you and say you're going to be cracking the UFO mystery and then, of course, using the UFO mystery research to then find a way to make faster than light travel craft or anti gravitical craft. It just becomes a little bit silly when you think about it. But that's my feeling. When a company comes along and says, we are backed by a, a guy from Skunk Works who used to be at the Lockheed Company. Right away, you have to raise your eyebrows and go, wait a minute. Why is a member of the military industrial complex represented in this group? And then, and then again, where's the money coming from or going? Lately, we're hearing there's a major amount of money, some $37 million or so, that's being bantied about as maybe money they owe. I don't understand anything about this company more than anyone else does. All I know is this. If they have access to these three videos, they should know more than I know and more than my staff knows. Why do we have to figure out that the gimbal video wasn't part of the, the uh, excuse me, the um, Nimitz case and also find out what part of the country was it, was it shot and who shot it and what aircraft carrier group was involved? If they really know so much, TTSA, why are they holding back information that we have to go figure out on our own? So this doesn't smell right to me. Now, uh, okay, so back to uh, my question. Where, where did you go first as you started to uh, do your investigation? Well, ironically, at the same time that Tom uh, DeLong was coming out with his group and announcing them on a stage, I had been looking into anti-gravity research, and I wanted to find a company that was pioneering aerospace development in that area. And I came across one company that looked fairly interesting. They had a very good visionary, a very interesting visionary, but it, they, they had no funding. And it was clear their funding was not going to be coming anytime soon. And then in the course of looking for a possible helper to fund what we were doing at that company, I discovered Joe Firmage. And I remember Joe, of course, from the 90s, an amazing guy who had probably, I think it's safe to say, he helped invent the idea of apps. And also the idea that websites would literally be the way commerce and business would really be done with websites on the Internet. He was a very, very futuristic thinking guy, made a fortune in Silicon Valley. And then one day, apparently, he had some kind of an epiphany, you know, whether or not he had a vision in his in his his home, whether or not you can say it was something more than a vision, whatever. He decided after that, sometime after that, to devote his life to UFO research and donate, and I mean donate or give away, my understanding is millions of dollars. So when I contacted Joe, I said, look, what's your company about? He said, well, we're going to develop this company. We're going to build this anti-gravity device. We think we've got some great support from members of the intelligence community, and I've had that support for 20 years, Bob. So I think we'll end up be able to make a great company and we'd love you to join the company and help us with communications and build an absolute entertainment studio that will dole out content that will be movies, TV shows about 
the discovery of maybe antigravitical physics, how that will lead to maybe other methods of propulsion and also maybe energy. And Joe had a real great vision, and I bought in on that. My lawyer, lawyer and I uh, and Joe worked on a contract. Contract was a valid employment contract, signed it, and joined and started to work with Joe. And it was very, very early on in that period that it became clear that Ron Pendolfi, formerly inv- one of the top scientists at the CIA, according to the New York Times, by the way, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the credential that Ron has. He's a very, very top scientist at the CIA, was anyway. And I figured if Ron's involved, this has got to be a good thing. This can't be bad. I had a friend of mine who's been in many of my shows, Dr. Bruce McAbee, a Navy optical physicist. He actually analyzed the Guardian video, Jimmy. He's one of the people that felt the Guardian video must be something authentic without a doubt. And uh, he knew Ron Pendolfi. And that the article that I mentioned before at the beginning when I came on that was in the same edition when I wrote the, R- the Face on Mars article for Omni Magazine, that was an article about the relationship between Bruce McAbee and Ron Pendolfi. And Omni was trying to figure out, is Bruce, Bruce McAbee kind of a turncoat? Because at one minute, he's a UFO researcher. He was a top guy in the fund for UFO research. But also, he was having meetings at the CIA. And he was having these meetings at the CIA with Ron Pendolfi back in the 90s. And these meetings would be like paper bag lunches. They'd all get together. They'd have their lunches. And Bruce would walk in there and give them kind of lectures about UFOs. So I asked Bruce to look into what I was looking into. He sent Ron an uh, an email that basically identified that I was looking into this whole thing. And by by the way, Grant Cameron was lecturing back in 2017 that Ron had backed Joe in the development of a device. Now, that device was not an anti-gravity device. What Grant Cameron was lecturing back in 2017, in the summer of 2017, was that Ron was interested in a device related to a portal whatever a portal might be. So I asked Bruce to show this to Ron, and Ron came back to Bruce and said, "Mm, something not flattering about Grant, but never denied the information. So I figured, well, that was pretty good, you know, backup that Joe may be onto something. Now, look, I can't talk about my relationship with Joe and what went on in the year that I've been working with Joe, other than to say the company is having financial difficulties, and I mean major difficulties. Why they're having the difficulties is, is, is a plethora of reasons. I can't even get into it. But mostly, I would say that Joe's inability to prove it to a level of certainty is one thing. But then there are people that are claiming that maybe Ron never believed in it. And I don't know about that because I went through this process and my understanding is Ron was into it. So that's where we are right now. And I'm trying my best to figure out Is there real support for Joe's device? No matter what, Joe is a visionary. Joe may have his issues, but Joe is a visionary. So the question really comes right down to it. How will this play out? Well, I think Joe will will step up eventually and discuss this more publicly. I think that will happen, and uh, we'll figure that out. But anyway, that leads us to this other kind of interesting issue, which is these people all seem to know each other. Ron knows Joe. Hal knows Joe. Hal and the former guy who was at the CIA running the weird desk before Ron, Kit Green, he knows Joe. Hal and Kit were very interested in Joe's device in the early incarnation back in 2009. So it's a fascinating story. And it does look a lot like what we're looking at here, again, is a mixed bag. And we have to try to figure out what's what. And that's what I'm working on. Now, Joe Firmage, the the other thing is his company was called Academy of Arts and Sciences. I'm just Say that again? A, a Academy of Arts and Sciences. And well, I, to be fair to Joe, if you know your, your chronology, Joe came up with that idea way before there was a To the Stars Academy. That's what I'm saying. No, that's so exactly Hal put off. You, you, we could do the math here. Right. Hal put off is the one guy that was involved with both. So I think Hal should come on tonight if we had our way. I asked Hal <laughs> to call me the last couple of days. I wanted to talk to Hal before I went on this show with you, Jimmy. I wanted Hal to give me at least an update where we were last talking back in March and April. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his last words to me were, yes, I'm going to have Lou Elizondo and I'm going to have Chris Mellon call you and see. Because, Bob, you've done more work in the UFO video area than anybody. I respect you. And I'd like you to to help us out here. They never called me. They apparently made a deal with some other network doing whatever they're going to do. But if you want to treat this seriously, 
Why not bring it to people that have cut their teeth on this for years, know where the bones are buried, and really do the right job here? So again, I might be the outsider looking into TTSA, but I ver- I'm very clearly aware of the players in TTSA. And so when it comes right down to it, I would think Hal Putoff would want to start talking openly about this connection between Joe Firmage previously, now TTSA. And I think I'm the one journalist that can bring that together because I know them all. Let's take a break right here. And the the other part about this, and especially since we're talking about ant- anti-gravitical uh, devices, is we got to get back and swing this back around to Skinwalker and what is going on there too Hell as yeah. well. So and it, 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 it is very strange to me here, uh, Bob, that uh, and I in in a weird way I feel bad for Tom uh, because he I think he just wants to do the right thing. He's fascinated with the UFO subject and alien and ET contact, like we all are. We've all had strange things that we have seen. I've seen my my share of that. And once you get into it and you have these epiphanies that change your life, you try to get these answers. And I don't know. I, something feels weird to me about this entire situation that Tom might have himself wrapped up in. There's no doubt. I'll just add one thing that, um, uh, again, I know there's a lot of UFO conferences out there, Jimmy, and I don't want to make a competition thing out of it, but uh, there's a new conference that I'm going to be speaking at back in, in March, and I'm going to be also moderating the panel discussion on the Pentagon UFO military witnesses, both Nimitz and most likely Roosevelt. And I'm also going to be mentioning the connection that you're making, which is there seems to be a repeat performance here going on. If you go back to the uh, you know period in the 80s, there's a guy named Bill Moore. And Bill Moore spoke at a conference, and he spoke and tried to tell the world that he was dealing with the intelligence community, but he was also dealing with the UFO community. And he had to admit that he was not doing such great things somewhere, somehow, and maybe he was feeling bad about that. But my goal is to come there and tell people the truth, journalistically, not just Uh, give it from a UFO position or a UFO phenomena position, but from a journalistic position, talking about the black budgets, talking about where our, where our monies are going as American citizens. It's becoming more of a political thing in the sense of our, 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 our country, just our country, not blue or red or anything, just our country. Why are we left in the dark about so much money? You know, right before 9-11, I was telling you before when we weren't on the radio that um, Rumsfeld said sometime shortly before 9-11 that, literally speaking, we've lost in the trillions of dollars. We don't know where the money is. Trillions. Trillions is just missing. Are you kidding me? Trillions is missing? So if you have to be a – if you're a political uh, person or you're running for office or whatever, wouldn't you want to make that a platform? Wouldn't that be important? So anyway, that's – my thinking is right now as a journalist, but I think more than anything – Speak to people about what the truth is. Let them hear the truth as much as we can give it to them. And I say the same thing to Hal Putoff. I say the same thing to Ron. I've been uh, having conversations through email with Ron, and I'm trying to get him to understand. If you have evidence that you can show certain UFO cases are not real, let's see that evidence. Let's talk about it. If you have evidence that other cases might be real, show us that. But just to mention offhand things are not real and, oh, the Nimitz case didn't happen. Well, why would we accept that? We want answers. We want details. And hopefully by the time March rolls around at the conference, I'll have a lot more details, but also for my own TV show. So the most important thing for me is truth. Jimmy, my shows have been called fact or fiction, question mark by and large. That's the idea. Is it real or is it not? And that's the question. So we're really getting into it now. Let's take a quick break right here. Our guest tonight, Robert Kiviet. It's all on the table tonight here on Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. You can follow me on Twitter. Join the conversation at J Church Radio. This is Fade to Black. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com. Radio.com. <laughs> 
amigos, yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love talkstreamlive.com. Talkstream Live is always on 24 7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to talkstreamlive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com If you have hard water, the lime scale not only leaves white spots, it clogs pipes and breaks down appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars in energy and wear. Eliminate lime scale and other water issues like brown staining and bad odors with HydroCare water products available from Wave Home Solutions. Wave's affordable water systems don't use salts or chemicals. You'll love the way your water tastes, smells, and looks. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. You are listening to Fate to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The Revolution is on radio. Ciao. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night is Fader Night. We'll have a live report from Lima, Peru, about the press conference going down there tomorrow about the Nazca mummies, followed by open lines all night long. Wednesday and Thursday, we are taking off, shutting things down to spend uh, our Thanksgiving with our family. Tonight, it is Bob Kiviet. And, and now, Bob, uh, as we jump back into this, mm-hmm. uh, I, I want to... Focus on one thing real quick. The the appearance that TTSA has been giving us and the UFO community, if not the world, is that the Pentagon is uh, supporting their efforts and supplying them with information that this is a Pentagon and CIA thing. 
Um, when I say something like that, what's your reaction? Well, that's the appearance. But when you press the Pentagon, they are so dismissive that one has to wonder why would they do that if indeed this is released one way or another, and I've heard Lou's technical explanation for it and all. Let's talk, let's talk English, guys. Let's talk English, okay? If the Pentagon is allowing these videos to come out and, be represent, and representing them at, or allowing them to be represented by anybody as really shot by our own naval craft, Navy planes, that are paid for by the United States, you know, and we are the taxpayers. We're buying every one of those planes. We're buying the Raytheon cameras. I don't want to get too much on a soapbox here, Jimmy, but let's face it. Those are our videos. You know what I mean? They're ours. And we want to know what the hell they are. So why would this become a game of Lou taking them out somehow, getting them delivered to him somehow, never giving us the per- correct provenance? And then when you look into it, you find out the Pentagon will not confirm them. So that's a big problem. And I think it'll make it or break it in terms of the believability factor. You have to step up and say, these are real. And here's why they're real. And here's where they came from. One of my friends, actually, many years, I I think of him as a friend, Billy Cox. Uh, He's a good writer out in Florida, worked for many newspapers, but he's also covered this beat quite a bit. And Billy wrote a piece uh, that I read on the internet. And it was really a piece that simply stated the same basic idea. That if you brought these into a courtroom, basically, the provenance will fall apart. And without the provenance, you don't know what you've got. So it's time for the provenance to be shown. And if they come up with another video, no offense, I don't want to see it through Lou Elizondo. I don't want to see it through Tom DeLong. I want to see it from some governmental, respected person that steps forward and says, this event occurred on the coast of Florida, off the coast of Florida, these, we now know how many videos were shot during the 2015 event. At least we know of at least many more than have been released so far. And if Lou knows more than we know, then why isn't he telling people? So how come I know so much about the Roosevelt case? And we have some really great researchers out there, Jimmy. There's a, there's a Facebook page called the ATIP Facebook page. And a guy named Dave Beatty, beautiful, he did a beautiful a recreation of what the Nimitz invent, event looked like. And it's posted on the Facebook page. People should see this. It's a, a little movie, basically. And it shows what these craft probably look like based on the witnesses. But again, I say to Lou tonight and say to Hal, why didn't you call me and let's talk about these videos? Why are they being kept in a very, very small group and then given to one particular TV group I'm aware of that I don't, I don't believe they have any real expertise in, fo- in photo, photogrammetry and expertise in videos That's what you want in this kind of a case. So I have to say I'm a little let down by the New York Times, and I'm surely let down by the Pentagon not stepping up and saying what the the provenance is. But I'm digging, and I'll I'll try to get to the bottom of it. Now, and and Skinwalker is right in the middle of this, too, as well. Obviously, Bass and Bigelow and... And uh, and Skinwalker, this is uh, part of your research, too, as well. What is going on here? Well, the Skinwalker situation is is fairly complex. Uh, When you start looking into it, as we did, we noticed the New York Times was not getting into it thoroughly. Where did that money go with Bigelow? Where was it going? We did hear through the grapevine that the ranch had been sold to somebody. And we did our due diligence and we followed our leads at my company. And we found, with the help of, believe it or not, the ATIP page I just described, they were helping trying to get to the bottom of research that was being done. And it became pretty clear who the new owners might be. But well, I know, whether or not I, the new well, owners want to be made public or not, it's a fascinating situation because the people that are involved in Skinwalker Ranch have backgrounds that are fascinating. And well, I think we should want to know more about them. But uh, due to my uh, you know, journalists, we have this credo and we like to keep our sources close uh, we don't necessarily want to blow the relationship with our sources, so I'm not going to be the one to divulge the names tonight uh, to maybe the other chagrin of certain people out there, but I can't do that. But um, 
there's a fascinating story behind Skinwalker Ranch. I think the idea for years at my company when we're doing our shows at the Fox Network especially, we never really saw any hard evidence of anything really happening at Skinwalker Ranch. We heard stories of things, you know, gigantic wolves and strange uh, maybe even UFO sightings and different things. But we, the one thing we did hear a lot about were like negative things. Uh, possibly either ghostly or even demonic things. And when, when, you, when you dig into the research of what, what uh, Harry Reid was saying, uh, former uh, senator, obviously Senate Majority Leader at one point, he felt that we should do a study back in 2007 and 2006 seven on this entire idea of UFOs and whatnot. But most of the money seemed to go to Bigelow, and most of the activity looks like it was probably at Skinwalker Ranch. And when he went public and he said that a lot of the military do not want to look into UFOs, or he said actually the intelligence community, there are people that don't want to look into UFOs because they may be demonic, and it somehow goes against their religious thinking. I say, what? What kind of military would you want that judges their, their decisions about protecting us or not, whether it fits their religious thinking? That's nuts. So why weren't people digging deeper and asking Harry Reid direct questions? Did, don't you mean, you know, ask Harry, don't you mean evidence was being, con- or being collected at other places, not the UFO events themselves? Why are you conflating UFO sightings in a way and military UFO sightings with alleged demonic activity? No one asked Harry these questions. No one seemed to care. Well, I care. So I'm going to get into that very heavily in the show that we're going to do. We're well, going to find out what they're talking about because there appears to be some negativity about Skinwalker Ranch, which I don't know why, why it belongs there. From what my understanding is from the new owners, they really want to look into the truth. They want to figure it out. Okay. But there's an event. I was tra- just want you to know Bob Bigelow seemed to have told George Knapp somewhere. I don't have the exact quote, the attribution today, but I'll get that for you. Bob Bigelow apparently told George Knapp, who was a chief journalist on this, and I think George is great, but, you know, there are times you want to ask George, why didn't he ask tougher questions? I mean, George has put out the idea that Bigelow felt that if Skinwalker Ranch became more popular as a name, and the idea is scientists are there looking at the UFO and other phenomena, why not take those scientists and look into another area? So I let one of the owners of Skinwalker Ranch know that there's this amazing event out in Malibu, California. There's a guy shooting video out there right now that involves benevolent beings, apparently, very benevolent, maybe angels, maybe some sort of other kind of dimensional beings. You have military craft flying in. The footage is extraordinary. It's like amazing amount of footage. And the individual shooting the footage has an incredible life story to tell, too. And he's getting these messages. And I'm not, I'm not talking fairy airy here. This is real stuff. This is real interesting video, and there appears to be some kind of connection between the individual in Malibu sending up kind of like, you know, signals the way Stephen Greer did years ago, and still does, I know, and getting some kind of communication back. So I wanted the Skinwalker Ranch people to think about going out to Malibu with me and looking what's going on. And also the area of Malibu we're talking about got inundated with those fires terribly the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting dynamic. You've got an incredible amount of activity, benevolent benevolent beings apparently giving very, very positive messages to this individual. And look, I don't know if the messages are coming into his head telepathically. I don't know whether or not he's, he's imagining it. He doesn't believe so. But the video evidence, and I stay focused on video, Jimmy, the video evidence is extraordinary. Extraordinary amount of footage, Apparently, almost every night, there's some kind of activity. You've got things in the sky that you can't explain. And then you've got a craft. One particular event happened in his backyard. This huge ball comes floating through. I mean, huge. And out of nowhere, there appears to be another ball that appears on this neighbor's roof. And when you see the footage, what you see is an extraordinary event event happening with night vision photography. It should be looked at by some of the best experts in our country, and that's the kind of material I want to bring to bear in the new, uh, the new show and also at the conference. But again, I asked the new owner of Skinwalker Ranch, one of them, would you look into this case? And he's considering it. So, I mean, that's something positive, and I think it would be a nice way to balance any negativity being thrown our way about UFOs and whatnot to 
a, a different a different level of thinking. And I'm, so I'm, I'm keeping watching, the mind open about all these issues best I can. Yeah, I'm watching Twitter here. Everybody wants to know if it's Tony Robbins. It is not Tony Robbins. Why do they mention Tony <laughs> Robbins? That's funny. Yeah, they, they, everybody thinks it's Tony Robbins that owns uh, Skinwalker now. Oh, no, no, no. no and no, by the way, not. it's not. And I think the actual story is when people find out there's a natural nat- – there are natural connections here. It's not like somebody from out of left field. And I think it will all make sense to a lot of people when they understand it. And uh, I guess that will be something for that individual to decide on his own when he wants to come out. Well, uh, and I'll let the audience know that um, I have uh, been exposed to and known about the new owners of uh, Skinwalker for a few months now, and I haven't mentioned it. It's it's not my place, but you and I uh, confirmed uh, that name, uh, names today, and so that kind of resolves it for me, but you have been in contact uh, with the new owner of, uh, new owners, I should say, of uh of skinwalker there is one thing as this comes forward in in the future um uh i'm not going to do that now as this comes forward in the future there are some things about the past and you kind of alluded it here the new owner who uh i guess we'll we'll keep it nameless for now was (laughs) he uh, he was trying to build an anti gravitic device was he not or was he investing well, into it uh again we're getting into the area that i will probably have to say no comment but i would say that again there is this cross point i don't want to be too evasive here jimmy mm-hmm. but i will say it this way there is this cross point even for me between ufos and anti-gravitical understandings What I can say about this individual is he's a fascinating guy. He has been involved in other aspects of what we call phenomenology now. The uh, CIA apparently coined the phrase phenomenology. When I I just thought I was doing shows about UFOs and unexplained phenomena. I did not realize I was doing shows that really ran the gamut of all phenomenology under the CIA's thinking, okay? But anyway, I was doing this phenomenology stuff. And it looks like this other guy – was also into what is called more like phenomenology. So he was interested in could anti-gravity be something we could harness, and he was involved with the anti-gravity development area. But whether or not he wants to give that information out to the public, that's going to be his, 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 his uh, to-do, not me. But I will say this. It is a fascinating cross point because when I discovered who it was, I went, bingo, makes perfect sense to me that that would be the kind of individual that would gravitate, no pun intended, (laughs) gravitate to anti-gravity advancement and all of that. But I will say this, um, it is an interesting connection that when people start to really hear it and see it, it's going to be, it's something to talk about. Now, so when we hear TTSA talk about Annie Gravitic and, and their science division and and this technology, are we, is this all part of the same circle again? Are we overlapping the personalities here? You mean in the anti-gravity area? The, all of it. Yes. There's no doubt. There is no doubt the names, the connections. It's a very small room, Jimmy. What? When when we and this is in in a weird way, uh, I feel like the wind has been taken out of our sails when it comes to the original ideas uh, to to the stars and 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 Bigelow and these these other uh, personalities here that things just don't seem to be going in the right direction. And before you're, you're right. You're right, and it's this obs- obfuscation, obs- really. It's not direct communication. It's not direct release, as we were talking about the provenance of the of the uh, Tic Tac UFO videos. Right. It looks like the whole thing is this limited hangout, and I actually would love to have a panel discussion with some members of the CIA or former members like Jim Simivan and Ron 
and talk about this limited hangout. There are four times that I'm aware of, oh, oh, I'll say three actually, three times that we've seen something similar. In 1974, Bob Emenegger was making a documentary called UFOs Past, Present, and Future. Right. The government was going to give him some footage and some evidence to prove UFOs are real, and they basically pulled it back. Then in 1988, I believe, I'm not sure the exact year on this one, but I think it was 88, you have that very strange TV special called you know, UFO Cover Up Live. Right. Again, mixed bag. Area 51 was mentioned. Yes, for the first time, really, Area 51 was shown on a flow chart. But a lot of other strange things were done in that show, like telling us that aliens like strawberry ice cream. And that may well be true, but it came through a very weird kind of silhouette interview of a guy that was trying to hide his identity. And whether or not you believe that, it, the credibility factor was very low. Then you had the Rockefeller Initiative in the 90s, where it looked like the Rockefeller family and people around government and, and experts and researchers were all getting together to release that UFOs might be real. And that sort of went away. And now we've got this. So it's never clear. It's always this kind of limited hangout, never quite what you want it to be. But I will say this. When you start getting into this material right now, we have more to chew on now than we ever had before. So it's a good time to really kind of crack the eggs here and get them open. The uh, the Pentagon side of this, uh, the Pentagon is uh, uh, directly tied to Harry Reid, this, this $22 million. Um, and then the comments about them, you know, now we need to trust. We need to just move forward. We've got Luis Elizondo uh, from the MIC. For, uh, I mean, a, a crazy job that he had, not dealing with UFOs, just counterintelligence. And Ann Mellon and others from the CIA, uh, th th we are now expected to trust who we've never trusted before that has teased this community and, and ridiculed this community. Now suddenly they're supposed to be our friends and we are supposed to move forward. And that's a very tough pill for us to swallow. Absolutely. But by the way, it's, it's somewhat history repeating itself. When I, when I saw the opportunity, my idea was we're going to get into things a little bit like Bill Moore had to kind of wrestle with. And I'm not putting Bill Moore in any kind of a pedestal in any way. But here's a guy who tried to get involved with the intelligence community, kind of got bitten a little bit from it because he had to do certain things he didn't really want to do and get to the bottom of things. But my view of it is if you speak at these events, you should bring something truly you know, uh, groundbreaking if you can, if you can. And so what I'm trying to bring is absolute closure to the money trail. I want to start getting back to this black budget program. Let me give you something to think about before we end tonight. This is a quote from the, from the New York Times article. Mr. Reed said he met with agency officials shortly after his meeting with Mr. Bigelow and learned that they, those officials, wanted to start a research program on UFOs. Mr. Reed then summoned Mr. Stevens and Mr. Anaya to secure a room, to secure, to a secure room in the Capitol. If you know your history, Mr. Anaya was a chief the uh, angry congressman about, or was he a congressman? Yeah, con he was literally claiming in a famous little uh, kind of speech he gave what, that it was wrong to have a black budget, basically paraphrasing what he said, or a government above a government that has its own air force, its own military, its own thought about what you know we should do as a country. In other words, a secret government above the government. So the Mr. Anaya, he's no longer with us, he's one of the people that helped get Reed the money to get toward Bigelow. But I find it fascinating because he was the same person that was calling out the people behind the black budget programs and saying it's wrong. So there's a mystery I want to crack into right there, Jimmy. Um, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, I want to actually uh, uh, talk about you personally. And one of the things that uh, I don't know how you have been at the right place at the right time, but one of the things that came in your possession was the UFO uh, Area 51 video. And okay. I want to talk about that when we come back. How did you get that video? I actually, it's a, it's a great story. We heard about the video appearing on a, on, a, on a tabloid show. We looked at that and we said, my God, is that real? 
And so we got a hold of the video through a source that knew, believe it or not, it's just great, great Hollywood stories, right? A bartender at an Italian restaurant I love to go to in Burbank uh, heard I was doing these type of TV shows. And he said, hey, did you hear about the Area 51 video? I said, yeah, yeah. He says, I know the pilot. I said, get out of here. He says, yeah, I know the pilot. So he delivered the pilot. Okay, the well, pilot hold, hold turned on. out to be this uh, hold, young hold guy on, hold, hold who on, just hold, left Area 51. Hold he on. had all the papers to show that he left the Nellis Range and what his job was and all that. And he brought us the video. And okay, he said uh, it was literally a tape that he helped get off the base. And this UFO video may be one of the most important we've ever seen because it's shot over the Nellis Range. And it appears to show uh, a UFO morphing, changing. First, it's a, first, it looks like a typical saucer. Then it moves into some kind of clover shape. Then it goes, apparently, according to the very freaked out uh, members of the team at Area 51, you can hear, hear them in the background and the audio going, what is that thing? I don't know. What it is. So we got that tape, but we had, to, we had to show the guy in silhouette. And there's a very, very important point tonight. We had to show this guy in silhouette, which you blacken his face and make his voice a little modulated. But we did it in a way where at least the guy was respected. You can see he was not looking weird or anything. And I give that as a cautionary tale to anybody else that tries to put someone in kind of silhouette or you really want to make it look credible. You do not want to make it look like you're trying to cover up someone's identity. You want to actually make it less, you know, and I, 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 I hearken back to a recent documentary that was out. I won't call it out, Jimmy, but you and I talked about it. You don't cover up somebody using kind of, you know, hackneyed kind of maneuvers so all i can say is i did a lot of work to keep this guy protected for all these years i do know his name i will try to contact him in the future and see if he'll ever want to come you know go public and really tell more about that video we'll let's, let's take a break right here i wanted to know what was the italian restaurant you know i live in burbank ah it was an italian restaurant uh let me let me think i want to come back you okay it. our guest tonight robert kiviet i am your host to be church this is fade to black more with Bob right after this short break. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Poor water quality is a major health issue, and it's only getting worse. Municipalities can't keep up, standards have dropped, and pollutants are increasing. Where does it all end? It ends by keeping the pollutants outside of your home with HydroCare's advanced systems available at Wave Home Solutions. No less than the best purification materials and processes have been developed by HydroCare to provide you with healthy, clean water for drinking, cooking, and showering. HydroCare far surpasses the competition in removing chlorine, odors, iron, lead, chemicals, lime skill, and much more. Don't settle for less when it comes to your water. We'll take care of the toughest water problems for you, whether it's from a city or well source. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, call 888-997-WAVE. That's 888-997-WAVE. Or go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. Your contact for current news and trending topics, KGRARadio.com. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollutants. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no-maintenance Wave unit. Call 888-717-WAVE, 888-717-WAVE, or visit dryhealthyhome.com, dryhealthyhome.com. Dry the This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. 
Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. So are you tired of being tired? Well, then it's time to get the tea. Hey, it's Lisa here to tell you about this all-natural, all-organic tea I've been drinking that has had great results for over 20 years. It's called Life Change Tea, and it's specially formulated to help detoxify and cleanse your kidneys, liver, colon, and blood all at once. The colon is one of the most ignored organs in the human body. The faster that waste is eliminated from the body, the less time that waste sits in our intestines, spreading toxins to our bloodstream. This tea helps cleanse chemicals caused by outside intruders from our entire digestive system. And get this, weight loss can be a side effect. And with continued use of the tea, you can experience clear, healthier, younger looking skin, increased energy, and a happier outlook on life. So if you're tired of being tired, get the life change tea at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. And like me, you'll be glad you did. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of Fade to Black by just calling 605-562-4482. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Just call 605-562-4482. You can listen to me, Jimmy Church, on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Go back, Lee Tappy. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight, Robert Kiviet, is here. And uh, let's uh, let's uh, get straight back into it. This is Fade to Black. You can follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. And uh, Robert, are you on Twitter? I'm not really much of a Twitter guy, but uh, I may become more one. I think our president has taught us the value of Twitter, I guess. <laughs> oh, man, you got that right. Um. <laughs> yeah. Let's By the way, Jimmy, the restaurant was called Michelli's. Oh, Michelli's. Oh, of course. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. One of my favorite places. Lancashire, and uh, if you know the area, L.A. and uh, and Vinterbo. Yeah, Kahwanga, Lancashire, yeah, and uh, oh, Kahwanga, right? Kahwanga, Kahwanga, Lancashire, right? Yep. Uh, home of the uh, singing waiters. Man, you that's, got it. The man, singing. Well, yeah, they got a, a pretty good uh, a Bolognese there at Michelle's. Yeah. I love that place. I love that place. It's great. Great institution. Um, I want to get, uh, uh, okay, back to where can we see, is the Nellis uh, Area 51 video online anywhere to Tonight, check Tonight, you can go to Netflix right now <laughs> and watch <laughs> UFOs, the best evidence ever caught on tape, my first show. You'll get a chance to see a young George Knapp sitting there talking about Area 51. Right. And then you'll see, right after that, we show the footage. And Jonathan Frakes leads us through it. And you got to see it. Whatever happened to Jonathan Frakes? I don't know. I mean, Jonathan is uh, one of those people where, you know, he's done a lot of amazing things in uh, acting and directing. Uh, one thing I always got a kick out of when he was hosting my Alien, Alien Autopsy Factor Fiction show Uh, He took a real serious interest in uh, the Roswell story. And then later on, he was one of the people behind that Roswell show. Remember Roswell? Teenage kids. and Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the guys behind that show. So I feel like I helped helped inspire that. (laughs) Well, he did. You know, he hosted so many of your shows. But I haven't haven't heard his name. And and he had such great hair. But that's another story. Jonathan was my – one of my most favorite – collaborators in the business. Uh, he came through in a big way. We did some very tough shows in 2000. Uh, UFOs caught on tape number two, preceded by Ghost Caught on Tape, Factor Fiction on Fox. It was the Kiviet night on Fox that night. And what's funny is 
that um, Jonathan was instrumental in helping us get through that because we had a ter- a, an awful production um, you know, deadline. We were given the job of doing two specials in like four and a half weeks, starting from scratch. We were all so tired by the time we were at the end, what we, you know, the VO sessions, the voiceover sessions, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and Jonathan just really hit it out of the park the last couple of nights and really helped. And it was, I always wanted to thank him personally more than I could because I was sleeping, I guess, by the time we, he was finishing. I was somewhere at my apartment sleeping. But anyway, so really uh, now when you finally uh, got the uh, Area 51 UFO tape, you actually got to interview the pilot, which we're not going to reveal here now. Everybody can relax about that. But um, as you talk to him, you got all of his credentials, everything lined up. Uh, how did his uh, recounting of the event hit you? He said it so well that we used it a couple of times in the show. The comment he said, he says, basically, the government could admit UFOs are here. They've been here. There's, they've always been here. And the tape just confirms it. The, uh, the other parts of, 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 of S4 and Area 51 about, uh, you know, the J-Rod videos and, and all of the other stuff that came out of Area 51, of course, you know, Bob Lazar and him coming forward. What do you think is actually going on out at Area 51? Boy, I'll tell you, I think George Knapp will be the first one to admit it. He told me it uh, when it was happening. He felt that the uh, whatever was going on at Area 51 was moved because if it was very serious and secretive and involving UFOs or aliens or anything like that, it had become way too popular. It had become known as this like almost like tourist attraction where people would willingly go near the Area 51 base and then get hassled by the whacking at security team. It was almost like, you know, it was a rite of passage, you know, to go to Area 51, get your camera out, try to film what's above the, you know, above the base. And then, oh, oh sure enough, whacking that's going to come over and they're going to tell you to leave or take your cameras. So eventually it became sort of a meme. And uh, I think they moved whatever they were doing. But I will tell you, there's some areas of Area 51 or right off of that section of, of, of real estate where some other really weird things have happened, Jimmy. I don't think we can get into it tonight, but apparently there's a story involving what's called the uh, Tall Whites. And these beings allegedly came and basically set up shop not too far from Area 51. And if you can believe this, there's some interesting tie-ins to the anti-gravitical research that we've been referring to tonight and what maybe these beings showed one guy that was outside that area. And if you could bring those two issues together, which I'm going to do in my show if I have my way, I'm going to show that some of the theories about anti-gravitical propulsion seem to match what these beings told this individual outside of Area 51. And it could be a movie, Jimmy. If you really understood the connection, it, I can't get into it tonight because it would actually go against my NDA uh, that I uh, that I have with uh, the people behind the anti gravity company I was telling you about with Joe, but I think it is a fascinating, fascinating connection. In fact, when I saw that connection, I was even more intrigued to want to stay closer to you know Joe and Ron and really figure out what what what's going on. So as far as I can tell right now, that story is for another night. But I will say this: the story about the tall whites even get even more interesting when you go to Google. And you see some of the areas these beings allegedly had to have as their kind of workout area. And you find out that there is flat areas around this place, not too far from Area 51, where it looks like maybe the government set up little camps for these beings to operate from. And I want to get that Google stuff in front of you maybe for another time. I want you to see some of these Google images from Earth, from, from space. It's a fascinating, fascinating thing. Very, really now, is. now, what about you personally? Have you uh, witnessed yeah. anything strange in the skies? You know, Jimmy, I had two events in my life that I believe helped inform my decision to stay with this crazy stuff because it is hard to make a living doing this stuff. No matter what anybody says, I have put my family through a lot of tough things, uh, the women in my life. I have put them through a tough thing because to, to try to make a living being this kind of journalist covering UFOs and phenomenology on network television is like, you know, it's not, it's not your typical job, you know? Mm-hmm. But 
there were two events. First of all, when I was leaving the advertising business and took a trip around the country to meet all the experts that became dear, if not dear friends, experts that helped me in my work, uh, I went to Mount Shasta. And I was actually there one night at the base of the mountain about five in the morning before the sun came up. I had my Nikon camera, living more like that print journalist at that time. I was thinking more about print journalism at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had my Nikon camera out. And sure enough, I, I, an orb, an orb very similar to what the gentleman in Malibu is shooting right now. His name is Chris, by the way. What Chris is shooting in Malibu looks a lot like what I saw at Mount Shasta. A ball of light coming out of nowhere, floating effortlessly over my car, must have been about maybe 200, 400 feet above my car. I watched this ball of light go right into Mount Shasta. I don't mean over it. I don't mean to the side of it. Right into Mount Shasta. That was it for that. And then years later, I was wait, 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 a, wait. Stop, stop, called... stop, 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 stop. Right there. Hold All right, on. I'm stopping let's, at Mount Shasta. Yeah, let's back the car up for a second. How? What? Okay. Uh, three questions, really quick. What year was this? How big was it? And what color? The ball of light was like a bluish white, almost like you see in the video that was shot by my my, my friend, my friend Chris down in Malibu. He became my friend now. Um, I think it was probably about the size, I would say, of a of a small little car, probably. Okay. And it it just floated effortlessly, like an arc, right into the mountain. In fact, I had to rub my eyes a couple of times because, first of all, I got I got it inside my viewfinder in the Nikon. But it wasn't the light was beeping as if it was going to be a black blob anyway, so I didn't bother, bother, bother taking the picture. But then I watched it go into the mountain, and my mind couldn't understand if it was a plane, it would have caused a crash. Right. I could, I just couldn't understand what I had seen. Right. And I did check with some people in the area that day, next day, and no one reported anything. Um, what but it year? looked to me like your classic uh, ball UFO, if you will. Uh, by the way, I did a show I was mentioning before with uh, Fox called Ghost Caught on Tape. And here's where phenomenology gets kind of weird. The government is saying, as I'm sure you've picked up and your listeners have heard, the government's trying to say through the CIA and other operatives that all UFOs, psychic power, ghosts, poltergeists, you name it, they're all under one category called phenomenology. Well, I had Michio Keiko, the former, you know, very, very, not former, the very, very, you know, well-known now scientist, Asian scientist, has become very prolific on television. In 2000, he was not well-known at all like that. I had him come on from New York University and analyze a ball of light that was floating around Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's one of the most intriguing videos I've ever seen. It could have been a UFO. But in our show, we had it as a ghost because people claimed it was a ghostly orb flying around San Paulo, Brazil. Mm -hmm. But I think my the UFO I saw near Mount Shasta looked a lot like that. So the Ghost Caught on Tape show, I'm, I'm actually going to get that show out there in the digital platforms in the next couple of weeks. I think people are going to see that show. So it's called Ghost Caught on Tape, Fact or Fiction. Jonathan Frakes narrates it, and it's from that same time period. But anyway, that was one event, Jimmy. That was just one. I had another one, too. Yeah, what was the second one? Oh, Jonathan Frakes, by the way, just uh, directed the new Star Trek Discovery. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm so yeah. glad. I'm going to go see that. Okay, second anyway, event. Second event. All right. The second event is pretty serious. Uh, my son and I, my son now, Jaron, he's 17. He's bigger than I am. He's like a big guy. Uh, but he was a small kid back in, I guess, 2005 or so. I was living in Tarzana, which is a very nice area near Encino here. I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a nice piece of property then. So pretty much I'm in the backyard. Beautiful blue sky day. Uh, you know, nothing but the day, enjoying it with my son. We're out in the back. And all of a sudden, I look up and he looks up. And what looks like to be a boulder, imagine a big rock is coming horizontally across the sky right over our house. You could see it kind of tumbling, but it was not coming down. It was, it was close enough to us that we could see edges of it. It looked like a, it looked like a meteor, really, basically. And it was leaving a trail behind it like two wakes behind it on each side of it, leaving like like a water skier might do in, in, in the water. And we'll, don't forget, a blue sky, no clouds, nothing. We see this rock tumbling, but it's not coming down. It's staying very, very horizontal as it crosses our house. It seems to go very effortlessly toward the mountains, toward Malibu, believe it or not. And as it starts to dissipate, it actually starts to kind of just disappear. 
as it disappears, my kid, by the way, Jaron's going, Dad, Dad, is that an alien? You know, he doesn't know what it is, right? But out of nowhere, in the same direction we're looking at this thing, a bright, clear rectangle of yellow light, bright yellow light. Imagine a rectangle, look like almost like a, a a a piece you would have in a mahjong game years ago, or whatever. You know, look like a yellow a yellow rectangle. It's it's gigantic. It must have been you know half a mile you know in length and maybe a, a quarter of a mile in um, in width. And it's it's tracking back now the same direction this thing just dissipated from, and it's literally co- copying that direction in reverse. And as we're staring at it another rectangle appears right in front of that one and the two start tracking back together and just as we see that a third one tracks with a, a three now are going in the same direction nice and slow back the direction of where this thing came from and then i i start yelling uh to my wife at the time come down come down and as we're doing that we turn to the house and we notice on the other side of my house there's three more rectangles all moving together so we have six rectangles moving on both sides of my house, house in the same direction this thing came from. And then just when we st- we don't know what to think, we're freaking out. All them, they, all the lights, whatever they are, shut off like that. Hmm. So my understanding from what this was was some kind of an event that you know we couldn't explain it. And I asked a lot of people from the area what they saw. It was noon on a weekday. Um, nobody said they saw anything. There was no reports of any kind. It seemed to be local to my general region where my home was. And to this day, the only evidence I have to show anybody is a video that I found that was shot around 2000, uh, a few years before my event. And it took place in an area in Europe and it looks very similar. It's these rectangles forming one in front of the other over an ocean area in Europe. And I'll make that public probably uh, – if I do this new series soon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that video public and show people what happened in, above my house. is very similar to what this video has. I was, I was in uh, uh, Burbank. Uh, this is probably uh, – this is 2018. So around 2010, uh, 2011, and I just look up and I see something moving in the sky. This is probably – two o'clock in the afternoon, same thing, right? Clear blue sky. And I look up and moving the opposite direction of yours. This is going from South to North. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. Yep. Um, Up towards the mountains, uh, up towards like the Silmar area, right? San Fernando, Granada Hills, whatever. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's a tumbling. It's like a meteor, but it's flying, I, I don't even know how to explain it. And it was moving sideways, right? It wasn't crashing into the earth. It's just. That sounds right. familiar, Jimmy. Right. And I could hear it. I could hear it fizzling, like like crackling. Wow. It flew right over my head. Not high. I could see everything. And then it looked like off of the back of it. Remember um, uh, those little snakes that you could light on fire, right, and would crackle the little black oh, yeah, pellets, yeah, yeah. right? Okay, so the back of it was like that, right? It was, and and it just had this crazy static trail of uh, it looked like a snake that you lit on fire. Well, for those snake pellets, I don't know how to explain them. I haven't seen them in years, but that's what it reminded me of. And it just it kept going, and then it flew over the mountains, and I thought to myself, that's I need to go chase that, right? <laughs> I need to go and jump on the 5, get on the 14, and, and see where that thing <laughs> crashed because it, it came down. Nothing in the news. No reports. Exactly. It seems to happen a lot. And, you know, it's interesting. The more research you do into this phenomenology thing that the uh, intelligence community seems to be pointing at is that possibly these events – are geared toward the individuals and the individuals are to experience the event and then maybe share it with the rest of us. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that, but I know one thing, the evidence I got is from another part of the world, a little bit uh, before the date of mine. But again, I can point to it and say with, uh, with certainty 
This is the kind of effect I witnessed almost identically. I don't have the uh, boulder, if you will, of the meteor, as you described, but it's that's a similar part of our stories. Very interesting. Yeah, I, um, I, I want to ask, I don't want uh, this to get away from me. Um, I want to ask you about Ray Santilli real quick. <laughs> Um, Ray, uh, such an enigma. <laughs> Did do you think Ray felt any guilt, Jimmy? I got to be honest with you. I have heard all the stories about the hoax. We did a show called World's Greatest Hoaxes for Fox, and we included the alien autopsy because we felt that there were signs clearly it was not real after three years of research. We didn't know that when we aired the first few shows. We did not know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but no matter what anybody says, by the way, we did not know that. It was a mystery to us from day one. And by the way, I want to throw this in just real quick. We got a call from the Department of Defense on the alien autopsy, and the DOD guy said flat out, we don't know, Bob. We think it's a mystery too. I said, really, Sam? His name was Sam S., we'll call him. Sam S. from the Department of Defense said, Bob, tell your people at Fox, and you should know this too, there was a fire, and we lost most of the Roswell evidence. So you know what? It could have easily been real for all we know. I went, Sam, thank you very much for the mystery. We appreciate that. Yeah, right. <laughs> but then you're talking about Santilli. Well, I have lived the process with Ray. I witnessed him coming out with it. I witnessed him go public with it. I saw him try to convince people of other things like this fake cameraman he had. Right. But I will say this. I also witnessed Ray in the streets of London very nervous, seemingly being followed, was worried that he was leaking something that maybe needed to be looked at a little bit differently than we thought. My, my suspicion is, Jimmy, that there is a real film of autopsies, and it maybe was something where Ray got a little bit of the idea to do this from someone else, and there may well just be an experiment called the alien autopsy, to see what the public would do if they were shown an alien of this kind. Now look, another fact seems to be very interesting to us, my company. When we discovered who the alien autopsy sculptor was, the guy who built the alien that was being shown as a real alien in 2002 or 2003 or so, we made a deal with that individual. His name is John Humphreys. John Humphreys never mentioned anyone else really helping him, and he said that he made it with the help of some images given to him, just some images. And he used those images to help create the alien autopsy. Well, that matched the story that Santilli came out later and said he had a couple of frames that survived the degradation process. And so it sort of fit. But now we have a guy that came out named uh, Spiris Malaris who claims he was behind it and John only worked for him. It's a very messy story. And someday, Jimmy, someday... I'm still fairly young. Someday I want to do the definitive alien autopsy movie, let's say, that is not a movie that, that, that came out in England called Alien Autopsy by two actors named Ant and Deck. I'm sorry. That's not the story. And that's There's not story the story? Here, not I the mean, story. I, I thought that movie was uh, was pretty good. I felt I felt like it was, <laughs> it was probably closer to the truth than what Santilli was presenting. And doesn't Santilli uh, come out in the end? Yeah, at the end, the, whether you like the movie's premise or not, there are two things that make the movie intriguing for me and my people. We found it fascinating that they introduced this kind of German or person that was behind some of the uh, story. There is a German involved behind the story, and guess what his last name is? What? Spielberg. Oh, no. Remember the connection when Omni called me and said they think Steven Spielberg's behind it? Mm Mm-hmm. Wasn't Steven Spielberg. It was a guy named Volker Spielberg. Oh, there you go. Now, if you want to look into Volker Spielberg, as we did for the show World's Greatest Hoaxes on Fox, there's a story there. So that was one interesting fact. And then Santilli coming out at the end, claiming that the story is that the film degraded, but he still had a couple of frames and they're somehow within the original f- footage that we aired on Fox. That's unbelievable. But you know what? It keeps the story kind of going, and Ray knows how to do that, which is pretty pretty interesting. Did you ever find out which frames were allegedly real? Well, just the last couple of months, we started to look into it. And there's one particular scene. It runs for about maybe 10, 15 seconds. And it's where the doctors are taking out some crystal. 
It's a little gory for those a little bit faint of heart. It's a little gory because the doctor's working with like the intestines or something, what the alien has, whatever it might be. Right. Intestines, I guess. And then he's trying to get this crystal out of the of the of the of the of the flesh. And and that is according to Santilli's latest a documentary interview I've heard, that is the scene he's pointing to as real. And what's really interesting, we stared at that sequence at my company years ago for like two days, Jimmy. We thought that sequence just looked a little different. You've got to take a look at it. It's in the uncut footage. Um, it's available, and I'll, I'll get your, your, your producer to know exactly how people can get it. And if you look at this, you're going to see the scene. And I got to tell you, even though Santilli is filled with a lot of stories, there's a couple of things that just make you go, huh, what's going on here? So, yeah. It's a, and by the way, there was a film shown to Disney people back in the 70s. I'm fairly confident, based on the research we've done, that there was a film being bantied about at Disney that looked a lot like this. You know what the difference is? What's that? One, there was an alien lying on the floor in the video or in the film, and it was writhing like it was in pain on the floor while there was a dead one on the autopsy table. Now, the person who told us that story is a guy named Michael Maloney, and he was one of the top photo, photo photographers, really, for the Queen of England and a lot of famous people. And he was brought to Disney to do, do a project. And while he was there, he was told the story. So we did a show when the Anton Deck movie was coming out called Alien Autopsy. We were doing a documentary, an expose for Channel 5 in England. And it was all set to go into production. We were already in production. And Santilli and his people managed to get Channel 5 to cancel my documentary because they were worried about lawsuits and everything else. But in that documentary, we finally finished it. We aired it on some other networks around the world, but not in England and not in America. And it's called Alien Autopsy, The True Story. France aired it, by the way, and the French people seem to like it a lot. And in that, story, in that show, we look at this Michael Maloney, and we have him interviewed. And he tells the story about this other film that was shown. And he says when he saw the Alien Autopsy I, I aired on Fox, he said when he saw that, it looked a lot like what he, what he saw in 1970 so, what, 1977 or whatever. But the difference was, he says, the alien on the table looked similar, but in the vi- film he saw, I believe it was color, the alien also, there was also one on the floor writhing in pain. Fascinating. Fascinating. And, and then it goes back, you, you brought up uh, Bob Exler, the, uh, the, you know, the Holloman Air Force Base film, and he went uh, uh, the same thing, man. He was all over the United States, secret locations. This yeah, by the way, Bob, Bob Emenegger was, oh, em, 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 was a different UFO yeah, researcher. Em, em, yeah, Bob, Bob em, 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 Emenegger. And, you know, into the White House, all through the Pentagon, and was always uh, one It was always one step away from him, one step well, away, one, one step there's away. There's one amazing thing about this film he made called UFOs Past, Present, and Future, hosted by, uh, by Rod Serling, one of my favorite guys. In the movie documentary, toward the end, there appears to be about eight seconds of film where a UFO is coming down for a landing. That's right. And Emenegger conv- conveyed to me about three months ago that he believed it could very well be real. The funny thing, Jimmy, is he didn't remember exactly the, the provenance and how that film, that piece of footage came into his movie. But I think that could be years and a little bit of you know, just forgetfulness. I think, I think in, in many ways that eight seconds of film should be looked at and, and studied heavily. Thank you so much, Bob. Fascinating conversation tonight, and I look forward to having you back on with us. My pleasure, Jimmy. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bob. And have a great, safe, and wonderful Thanksgiving. You too. Happy happy uh, Thanksgiving to you and yours. Thank you so much. Bob Kiviet, a great conversation tonight. i got to take a quick break right here. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. At J Church Radio is Twitter. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to come back. I'll open up the phone lines for the last segment here before uh, we head into tomorrow. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back. Stay with us. Fox here and you 
You are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires. This year we've experienced more than our fair share. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. And last month I decided to make sure my family does not have to worry about food should we get caught in a real emergency situation. Introducing Numana, a healthy, storable product that tastes so good that you'll want to eat it every day instead of just during those times of duress. All Numana products have a 25-year shelf life, are MSG and GMO-free, no preservatives, and are made in America. With the Numana pack in your home, you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you've protected your family. Not only have I tasted and tested, I own it. Now you can too. Just click on the Numana banner on JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code Jimmy when you order. In addition to a discount, we'll send you an autographed Fade to Black t-shirt. Seriously. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go back, Lee Tepe. Hi, folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why, you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and my family is safe because of Numana Emergency Food Storage. Just go to the Numana banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Promo code Jimmy10. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. Robert Kiviet. That was a great conversation right there. And when you think about, uh, I'm opening up the phone lines right now, 323-825-5045 or 323-275-9695 or 818-921-6929. When you speak to uh, somebody like Robert that has done, you know, going back, alien autopsy, right? Uh, I, the office, 
UFOs caught on tape, one and two, all of the uh, stuff that he has done over the years. And it's a it's a ginormous amount of uh, production work that he has done. You need to just stop and listen. Um, the uh, the individuals that he has been in contact with and everything else, when he gets onto something, he is going to follow through. And what is going on right now, and I brought this up a few times tonight, all of the names that are being bandied about right now have been going around the UFO circles for years, years and years. And here we are. It's like once again, we're back into the middle of it, and the same names are involved. You know, so we need to just stop, take a deep breath, and and take a good close look at at what is going on. You know, and it's it's uh, very important. I don't know. Uh, I, I I don't know. I I just don't know. One of the things that uh, he said out of everything tonight that the next piece of footage that that comes out and the next piece of information that that comes out you know what there's got to be some provenance here it's got to be direct we need to hear from from the pentagon directly on this no more of this smoke screen stuff you know we we, we just can't deal with it and he is exactly right 100% and that that is where i am coming from on all of this okay phone lines are now open 323 323- Eight two five five zero four five or three two three two seven five nine six nine five or eight one eight nine two one six nine two nine. And I want to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow, NASCA. That's right. There's a press conference going down in Lima, Peru, and we will have uh, William Gallison with us tomorrow night live here on Fade to Black. All right, let's go to the phones. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? How are you this evening, Mr. Jimmy Church? What are you doing, Steve? How are you? <clears throat> doing great, brother. Doing great. Getting ready for the big turkey day coming up. Yep, coming up, man. Coming up. Coming up. And I hope you're ready. I know you are. No, I'm ready. I'm so, ready to pig out. <laughs> uh, so what did you think about this conversation tonight? Very interesting, Jimmy. Very interesting. He's got a lot of... You know, a lot of contacts and a lot of information. And what when the next round, which I just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, and Bob brought this up earlier tonight, the next round of information that gets floated uh, from to the stars, um, it's got to have some teeth to it this time around, doesn't it? Absolutely, Jimmy. It, it's they they've they've just been too weak and made too many mistakes on their first few presentations that if if nothing comes out with teeth like you say i really think they're done for in the in this community as far as any kind of credibility do you think um this is another thing that bob brought up that this is just about money you know, this is black budgets, and and people uh, get a hold of that budget money, and they are using it for their for whatever. But they don't care about UFOs, or they don't care about this community. It's about getting to those, uh, you know, to the millions of dollars that are just being freely given away, you know, from the Pentagon. And as far as TTSA goes, it's nothing but anything more than just an entertainment company, and. They're going to put out something probably on History Channel or something on the networks. Or they'll release a, a movie, uh, a couple more books, and another album. But it's it's just about entertainment dollars. It's just an entertainment company. That's all it is, Jimmy. That's I mean that's all. That's just the only way you can perceive it at this point is that their only focus is for entertainment purposes. If they have no true willingness to to truly delve in and produce true evidence of the ufo phenomenon period that's it yeah I mean, if, they, if they would they would already be there that's right I mean, they would have all they would have already have done it yeah i couldn't agree with you more steve i couldn't agree with you more well thank you for taking the time and uh, i'll see you tomorrow night on fader night okay 
right. I, I don't. I don't want to say happy Thanksgiving yet. I'll say it tomorrow night. All right, brother. <laughs> Thank As you, always, Jimmy. Thanks for the time. Thank you, Steve. Um, there's uh, there's one point, and I'll get to uh, the rest of the calls here in a second. There's one point that I want to emphasize, and it's this one. Look, what I don't want to hear from anybody else ever again is that, um, uh, you know what, there's a bigger picture here. There's something else going on. You know, don't worry about that. Let's worry about this other thing and more information. You know what, I don't want to hear that. All I want to hear is the Pentagon in possession with uh, ET material. Do they have a, a crash saucer? Is there um, uh, alien bodies that have been recovered? Do you have, are you in contact with ET? Anything else I, I just don't have time for. I, I just don't have time for it, Pat. I don't. I, I, I don't want to hear it. We've been down that road. I just don't want to hear it. I don't. We'll figure it out on our own. We don't need your help, TTSA, or anybody else. Either come forward with the real stuff, and that's it, or we're moving on. I just I don't have time for it. I, I've lost way too much sleep. Let's uh, uh, let's go to area code 830. You're up next. I'm Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy. This is Neil. Rubber Show. The one that sees the invisible dimension. Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, I, there was a while back ago last year, I saw a big uh, giant uh, cigar-shaped spaceship and moved in front of the moon, and it started emitting this gas, okay? And then it was a clear night, you know, no, you could see all the stars and everything. And it was like the moon was over Los Angeles. So I called the FBI and told them about that, and it says, uh, you need to call NASA because it's uh, that's out of space. And the thing is, he didn't realize all that stuff that was fought the gas was falling on top of Los Angeles too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So did you and call? I've did you this, did you call NASA? Well, no, I tried to call him. I called uh, the FBI and it says, "Look, I'm not your errand boy. You call him. You call him." It's hard to get in touch with NASA. And uh, it's like I, I was very angry because, you know, he didn't realize. And you could you could tell the fear in his voice. He hmm. believed me. Hmm. He knew I wasn't bullshit. Hey, no, no, you can't use you know, bad we, language, Neil, on this show. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay. But, you know, bull junking with, with him. You know, I wasn't, you know, he knew it. And the thing is. I'm watching the stars all the time. I do field research in different places of the country. And all of, like tonight, I wrote on Twitter, I says, I see, I was watching the stars tonight, and all at once, boom, where all these clouds come from, you know? And they had some research on Twitter. They said something about the scientists could see this dust cloud between uh, the moon and Earth, you know? Well, if you got these big giant spaceships putting out this gas like I saw that one day, but see, I don't see it when they do it the other times. I just happen to see it one time. Right. But that that's proof enough for me, you know? Yeah, yeah, very and, uh, interesting, very interesting. But see, like you was talking a while ago, you don't want to hear the same bull junk all the time. We, You know, I'm a new person that's trying to do disclosure. Because it's safe now, the government's starting to disclose about, you know, like to the stars. They're starting to disclose things. And it, saying, yeah, we got alien technology and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I so, do. Um, but, the, but the thing is, uh, I want to get on your radio show and be a host. And uh, there's a lot of things I found out, like them two alien... Uh, Carvings in California, they got a Jedi dude, and you could see it from five miles away. And he's a white Caucasian dude with a hood on, like the Jedi on Star Wars, right? It's carved on one mountain. Behind him is an alien carved out, too. And then 
the one to the uh, the left of me will be the right of him is a reptilian alien, and I found a picture of the reptilian one. But the alien that's behind the human, he's looking at this alien like, I got my eyes on you and you're evil kind of thing. Well, I need to get some researchers to go take a picture of it because everybody's going to say, oh, man, you doctor it up. You know, no, it's fake. Where right? is it? Where is it? It's in the mountains in California. It's around, I can't tell you where it's at because <laughs> when we go take the photograph, I don't want no one going over there because they might have hidden tunnels underground, you know? Because when I was over there, I was researching engineering too. You could see these big piles of dirt around these big giant mountains like someone was digging out the mountain and they just put it in a big pile like what? these rolling hills okay is it down near los you know? angeles is it up north where is it i mean how did it's you find highway. it well i do feel <laughs> i'm a field researcher right i go out in the field just like i saw the stuff in uh, arizona with the dinosaur tracks in the mud was turning stone. They got a meteorite blew up right real close to there. The petrified forest is there. That's a netter proof thing I could do too. Uh, dinosaurs are laying on the ground. They were turning the stone in the mud and half of it's like vaporized. You can only see the bones. And then the mud, the feces is turning the stone too. Well, I'm looking around and I can see these giant faces. They're turning the stone and these giant humans are gigantic. They're bigger than dinosaurs. Well, everybody's got everybody believing that, oh, we're just 20,000 years old. That's a bull. That's bull junk. You know what I'm saying? I got the proof. I found it. I'd love to do a documentary probably for your show. It'd be great. Uh, you know, like the Above Majestic did. But I don't know what kind of proof they showed, you know, showed. But I got some good proof, and it's brand new. And I had to reveal I've been doing this research for 13 years. You know, uh, the third eye thing to remote viewing. I went to the FBI, and I told them, look, you have. Ah, I think we lost Neil. He was there, now he's gone. Oh, really? That's unfortunate. Sorry about that, Neil. Well, it's not me. It was Neil. He was there. He was gone. Um, <clears throat> Neil, if you can hear me, what you need to do is you should do uh, put together uh, uh, a series of YouTube videos. Man, it's so easy to do, man. Just go out, and you don't even need a camera these days. You've got your cell phones and iPhones and 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 Samsungs, they they shoot great video, man. You should just go out, go on these locations, and and uh, start shooting this uh, this Jedi guy. I'm I'm just wondering where this is. You need to go and shoot it, and just pop a video out there. Get it, get it documented. I would say suggest that to anybody these days. And I realize that. Um, uh, everybody is understanding this more and more, but you really need to listen to me. You don't need a movie company. You don't need a record company. You don't need a network. You don't need a TV set. You don't need anybody behind you. If you have good material, if you have something you need to research, go and, and shoot it, put the video together, get it up there on YouTube, free distribution, and you can get your information out there. And everybody can see it, and everybody can judge it, and everybody can comment on it. It is the easiest thing to do today. It has never been like this ever in the history of, of, of this planet. Um, and if I, I would, back when I was trying to get a band off of the ground or getting an idea out, whatever, it, can you imagine, you know, uh, I mean, it was so difficult getting getting money together, trying to get into a recording studio to get a demo together, to take that to a record company and to get some A&R guy to, and then to take that. It's not that kind of party anymore, man. This is the best time. 
if you if you it's it's so simple. If you if you're a comedy writer and you want to put together a, a TV show, go and shoot it. <laughs> That's it, man. Put it up on YouTube. It's done. And if it's good, you can actually make a living from it. You know, if your material is good, it doesn't matter what it is. So if you if um if you want to research ancient history or UFOs or uh, any kind of phenomena or ghosts or whatever, go and shoot it. Go and shoot it and get it done. You can go and 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 get millions of views. More so than even if you had a TV show and it was out there. There are if um and if you doubt me, on any given night, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, 500,000 viewers, right? On any night of the week. These YouTube videos that are out there that are copying in a day 100,000 views, 200,000 views, a million in a week, right? Two million in a month. You've got more people watching your stuff than any of the networks. There's too much material out there now. You know, it's not three TV stations. You've got Netflix with eight gazillion, Amazon Prime with eight gazillion, and Hulu, and it's just on and on and on and on and on. Everybody is out there watching their own stuff. They, they're they not forced into watching History Channel or watching Sci-Fi or ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. It's not that kind of party anymore. It's not. People are going to YouTube and all of these a la carte situations to go and watch their stuff. So if you've got good material, go out there and shoot it. That's all you got to do. So, Neil, if you're listening to me, go. Been researching this for 13 years. Go. Get your stuff together and put together your your videos and, and, and get it posted up on YouTube. You don't need fade to black. You don't need anything. You only need yourself. And there's something else about this, whether you're talking about fade to black or anything else. The only person you can depend on is you. That's it. That's it. And and all of the material that you want to upload is all dependent on you. You don't have to worry about anybody else telling you that it's right. Somebody else is telling you that it's wrong. You're on the wrong path. No, do your thing. And if it's good, if it's good, people are going to react to it. And that's it. That's really the bottom line. Now, um, I want to uh, uh, swing this over really quick. The Nazca mummies are back in the news. And today, uh, everybody started getting together down in Lima, Peru. Uh, They went through a bunch of preliminary material today. Uh, Tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m., is the press conference that is going to kick off. Now, we are talking about um, respected professionals. We're talking about uh, archaeologists, scientists, and uh, uh, researchers that have been on this uh, for a few years now. The DNA testing, everything has been compiled. And, and tomorrow they're making this presentation. Also tomorrow, now check this out, they want to have a statue in Lima, of Maria, the mummy. That's right. And that is going to get voted on tomorrow by Congress in Lima, their Congress. Think about that. Now, the results of everything that is going to be presented tomorrow, the press is going to be there. Uh, the government is is part of this as well. And all of the researchers are going to be doing this all day long tomorrow. So um, how the press is going to deal with it, what the information is, all of the scientific analysis and all, this is what is going to happen tomorrow. Where are we going to be at the end of uh, tomorrow with with all of this? I don't know. But I will have William Gallison on, a writer and journalist who is down there right now in Lima, and I'm going to have him on the show tomorrow night. I may have a special guest or two along with William to talk about the information that is going to be presented and brought forward. Um, again, uh, this has been, I can't remember the first time that I 
reported on the Nazca mummies, but I'm going to say it was a year and a half ago. I do know uh, that last, when the videos hit, I'm going to say that that was last November, December, here on Fade to Black and Coast to Coast. And uh, and that was also um, with Jay Widener. Now, where has all of this ended up today? Okay, the DNA research and everything coming out of, of Gaia, I don't have any information on that. This is separate, and this is happening in Lima with uh, the people that have been digging and the researchers, archaeologists and anthropologists, paleontologists that have been doing all of this down in Lima. This is what is going to happen tomorrow. Um, I'm very excited about this. And then we get to go from that, and that will be from 7.30 until 8 o'clock tomorrow night, live from Lima. And then we will go straight into open lines tomorrow night here on Fade to Black. Very exciting times. And how all of this um, on Fade to Black over the last year uh, when we consider the Nazca mummies, uh, TTSA uh, disclosure, and all of the other things that have gone down with uh, us up at ESETI, with the night watches that we have done, uh, at, at going back two years, uh, three years at Contact in the Desert. All of this is starting to uh, come to a head. And uh, I can't think of another time in all of ufology, I was talking to Bob about this earlier, that it has ever been like this. It just hasn't happened. And you've been here with us along for the ride. I want to thank all of you for that. Um, This is Thanksgiving week. This is a very special time to spend with, with friends and family and uh, and to reflect and be thankful for. I am thankful for this audience. I'm thankful for my family and being able to do this in KGRA every single night of the week. And then when I'm not here, I'm over at Coast to Coast. And I want to thank all of you for that. You know, it has been an amazing weekend and everything uh, this past weekend, getting everything set up uh, for tonight and knowing that we are heading into the holiday season here um, not only uh, Fade to Black, but with my family. Okay, so I want to thank everybody. Tomorrow night's going to be a very, very special night. And for you to spend your time each night with us here, and especially through the holidays with us here at Fade to Black, it means so much. And I am thankful every single day. With that, I'm going to get out of here. Um, uh, do I want to disclose this? I'm going to do a little bit of disclosure. So, um, and this is why I can't wait to get out of here. Um, Over the weekend, Rita and I went to Steak and Shake. Yeah, we went to Steak and Shake, and we love Steak and Shake. So we go to Steak and Shake, and we brought it home. And Rita had chili three ways, right? And she goes, you know what? This is like the most amazing thing ever. I'm going to make my own version. I'm going to do this. And so after I sign off tonight... In about 30 seconds, I'm going to shut the studio down, and I'm going to go home, and I am going to have chili three ways, Rita style, at the house. And life doesn't get any better than that. So that is it. I am going to sign off. Tomorrow night is another fader night. Teresa Yanaris is spending her time with uh, uh, friends and family. And so tomorrow night, we're going to do the Lima special report. With that, this is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. It's going to be a great week here. Just I'm, I'm thankful for everything. Fade to Black's executive producer is Rita Camarion. Show is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Bob. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And syndication is KGRA, The Planet. Thank you to Robert Kiviet tonight. Great conversation. This broadcast only copyrighted 2018 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at JChurchRadio. Until tomorrow night, Fader night, everybody be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.